Is it okay now? Yep. Is it fine? Now I think it is. I think it is. Fine now. Nah? Okay, okay, okay. So done. So are you ready to start the new chapter? Are you ready to start the new chapter? Okay, let's go. So, what is the chapter name? It's Biotechnology Principles and Processes. So, uh, I was saying that many students, they are confused, right? They are confused in old NCRT and in the new NCRT, that which book they should follow. There are some extra lines in the new NCRT. There are some deleted lines in the new NCRT. But for the biotechnology, you can follow uh, whatever you want to follow, you can. It's just that in biotechnology applications chapter, there is one more paragraph added from the strategies for enhancement in food production okay that is the only difference otherwise there is no difference at all for this particular chapter you can follow any book you want to 
क्लियर बच्चे एनी बुक यू वॉन्ट टू या टूडे वी विल फिनिश दिस चैप्टर बट आई रियली डोंट थिंक दैट टू यू पीपल हैव सफिशियंट एनर्जी आई कैन सी दैट स्टूडेंट्स दे आर नॉट अप टू राइट दे आर नॉट रेडी टू रिवाइज दिस चैप्टर वॉट से आर यू रेडी टू रिवाइज दिस चैप्टर नंबर ऑफ स्टूडेंट्स आर वेरी लेस क्विकली शेयर द सेशन लिंक विद योर फ्रेंड्स एज वेल इन्वाइट अदर्स टू quick 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 everyone just share the session link with your friends as well invite your friends as well and let's start the chapter everyone yes more fire emojis in the chat very good very good your energy should be high let's finish this chapter and we need 4 to 5 hours to finish this chapter it's not a very lengthy chapter and its special class will be conducted once i'll finish the biotechnology applications right for this complete unit i will take one class where we will solve last 10 years pyq so now let's start the session here you people can see this is something very amazing there is a scholarship test for the iit j and for the neat and you just need to pay 99 rupees for that yes in 99 rupees right you can be the part of this test and if you will perform good you can get very exciting prizes here you can see have a look here and moreover it's not about the prizes see this test will be as per the neat syllabus so you will get an idea of that competition as well okay and it is just for rupees 99 so i really think right i think you people should go for this okay uh oh right so you people should go for this okay be the part of this test there is a link in the description box click there right follow all that instructions and please please be the part of the scholarship test okay so let's go let's start so the first thing is what is biotechnology tell me people yes tell me what is biotechnology what do you understand by this word biotechnology yes in a very simple language right bio means living organisms we are talking about the living organisms here technology we are mixing the living organism and the technique somewhere basically here in the biotechnology we are going to read the methods we are going to read the ways by which by using technology we can get best out of the organisms right we can get best out of the living organism now the question here is ma'am what is the meaning of this line that we can get best out of the organisms see we humans we are very selfish right we humans we are very selfish we need things for ourselves we need the things that can benefit us in a different way let's say there is a there is a microorganism you can take the example of any microorganism microorganism a b c any one any one right you can take the example of any microorganism let's say in from microorganism a you are getting a particular protein and that particular protein just giving you one you know just giving you one example right so that you can understand what exactly is the biotechnology so let's say there is an organism a and in from that organism a you people are getting a protein okay you people are getting a protein and that protein is increasing your immunity right it's a kind of medicine drug whatever you want to say but it is something that is increasing your immunity so so obviously what do you need you want that protein isn't it you want that protein because you want to increase your immunity right so what can we do we can use the technology we can use the technique we can use the ways by which we can get this protein from this microorganism so that's what we understand that's what we learn in the biotechnology that is what biotechnology is that is how you mix the biotechnology right bachche right bachche so here there is nothing to cram right you need to understand this topic and trust me this chapter is one of the easiest and one of the most interesting chapters biotechnology and the term was given by mr call right right the term was given by call when it comes to the biotechnology so it deals with the techniques okay let's not leave the ncrt so what is biotechnology it deals with the techniques of using live organisms or the enzymes from that organisms to produce the products and processes which are useful to humans okay so ultimately we need the things that are useful to humans so we are going to use the technique there is that clear is that clear now in the biotechnology there are two things one is your old biotechnology and another is your modern biotechnology there are two things that we have one is your old biotechnology and another is your modern bio technology these are the two things that we have now what is the difference in old biotechnology and the modern biotechnology again very simple but in old biotechnology we talk about the natural 
capabilities of organisms what do we discuss here we discuss the natural capabilities of living organism yes people what do we discuss here natural capabilities of living organisms for an example you know that uh do you remember this example aspergillus anyone in the class yes i want you people to answer in the chat section aspergillus niger what is this aspergillus is it a is it a protista is it a fungus is it a plant what is this aspergillus what is this aspergillus yes is it a plant is it an animal is it a fungus is it a bacteria what is it aspergillus obviously it's a fungus right it is a fungus so from this fungus what we used to get we used to get the citric acid right so this thing uh, this fungus used to produce citric acid so we are using this fungus where we need the citric acid aspergillus niger okay the another example is your yeast you know that we use it in the baking and the brewing industry right it used to pr it produces the enzyme that can be used in the baking and the brewing industry right baking in the and the brewing industry isn't it isn't it so all these things are the natural capabilities of the organisms right you know that lactic acid bacteria yes people you know about lactic acid bacteria from that lactic acid bacteria from that lactobacillus we get the lactic acid and that we use for the curd formation so these are the this is this is what we consider in the old biotechnology these are the methods of right these are the these are the ways by which we are using these living organisms their natural capabilities and we are getting benefit out of that right we are getting benefit out of that it is very simple it is very simple now when it comes to the modern biotechnology in the modern biotechnology it includes the gene manipulation here what we started bachche we started the gene manipulation that how can we manipulate the genes right that how can we manipulate the genes right so basically here in biotechnology modern biotechnology the genetic engineering okay genetic engineering of course it means the alteration of the sequence of dna and rna uh, right right so this is included in the modern biotechnology so that is what we need to understand okay so can you give me any other example of old biotechnology right i have given you two examples so can you people give me any other example of old biotechnology yes can you people give me any other example of old biotechnology yes quick 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 bache please you have to be sincere you have to respond here whatever question i'm going to ask please answer that question in the chat section be quick any other technique very good penicillin right the first antibiotic penicillin of course good example excellent mishra bache lactobacillus we have discussed anything else lakshman penicillin is a good example curd penicillin bas that's it you don't know anything else right try to revise microbes in human welfare you will get an idea of it okay so this is the old and the modern biotechnology so as per right if i have to define the modern biotechnology so as per efb okay as per what that's how you i can define this now because in modern biotechnology you are considering everything so see as per european federation of biotech this is important in the paper in the neat paper they can even ask you bache that efb stands for it is the european federation of biotechnology european federation of biotechnology so as per that they have given a definition of biotechnology where both the things are considered the traditional view as well means the natural capabilities part right and even the modern molecular biotechnology means the gene manipulation as well right so as per the definition of efb we are considering both the old aspect as well means the traditional view and the modern aspect and that that's how we define the biotechnology the integration it is defined as the integration of the natural sciences integration of the natural sciences and the organism and from that organism what do we need we need their products we need their protein so please read it carefully integration of natural science and organisms we can talk about the cells here their parts and the molecular analogs for products and services right the molecular analogs for products and services that's how we define it so please read it carefully each and every word should be clear in your mind because statement based questions can come from this part understood yes niharika is it clear so the integration of natural sciences and organisms cells parts thereof 
molecular analogs for the products and the services so in simple words basically we are using techniques so that we can get best out of that organisms we can get their products right we can get the chemicals the molecules that they have that are useful for human being we can get them directly from microorganism or we can study them or we can synthesize them let's say some molecules are present in our body that are normal that are important for our physiology right but we can get their analogs analogs you know na? that perform same function analogy hope you remember that okay the words are having the same meaning so basically we can get that from organisms as well this is the meaning here okay this is the meaning here that is what you need to understand now what is the next part the next part is the principles of biotechnology what is the next part next part is the principles of biotechnology let's talk about that please make notes bachi or you can simply highlight the things in ncrt okay but please pay attention so when it comes to the principles of biotechnology there are two things as i said the first is genetic engineering the first is what bachi the first is genetic engineering and second is chemical engineering the first is genetic engineering and the second is chemical engineering also known as bio process technology right also known as bio process technology it's very simple here as i said in modern biotech it's all about the gene manipulation alteration of the gene addition of the new gene removal of the undesired gene it this is what we discuss in genetic engineering right this is what we discuss in genetic engineering so ultimately in genetic engineering it is the recombinant dna that we have to form right rda technology that's what we discuss here right r dna technology r means recombinant what is the meaning of recombinant dna i hope you understand the meaning of recombinant to combine again right to combine again so recombinant dna we have to right in the dna let's say even if you are talking about the bacterial plasmid when you are adding one extra gene here one foreign gene here you are making a recombinant plasmid right you have recombined it you have added the new genes here so that's what we discuss in the genetic engineering okay now let's say why are you doing all that things right we have the industries for all that things right uh, like uh, there are companies that are trying to you know get new products new things it can be related to the cosmetics it can be related to the drug anything it can be okay so they are setting up the different different plants they want people to work there okay why is it so why 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 these things are important because bache because bache you want some proteins okay in general we know that how a gene is going to express itself right gene is going to express itself dna will form mrna mrna will form protein that's how it works yes people that's how it works dna will form the mrna and mrna is going to form the protein that's how a gene is going to express itself right understood understood that's how a, the gene is going to express itself so same is the case here students right same is the case here here if we are doing if we are you know putting efforts if we are trying to manipulate the genes because it is not something that we can do like this no it's not a cake walk we need a proper setup we need the equipments we need a lab right right so we need something we need a product we need a product so here in genetic engineering no doubt we have to alter the dna then bache whatever pro whatever organism we have modified right the organism that we have modified we need to provide that organism the suitable conditions as well right let's say you have decided you are going to crack the neat examination let's say you have that enthusiasm ki nahi yaar i can do it i know right what you need you need that particular environment right you need proper books you need proper strategy proper planning at least you have to sit and you have to study it's not like that you have decided niharika that i am going to give the neat and everything is easy no 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 you need books you need to practice you need to give the mock test you need to do this you need to do that same is the case here so in the first step you have altered the genes right you have altered the nucleic acid and now in this next in this chemical engineering you will provide the uh you will provide there will be the maintenance of the sterile conditions basically you are going to provide that microorganism the proper condition the sterile condition where it can grow where it can form its product are you getting it are you getting it so that comes under the chemical engineering so you please have a look of this right so techniques to alter techniques to alter the chemistry of genetic material will come under this 
right then what we have to do right techniques to alter the chemistry of genetic material to introduce these into host organism and thus change the phenotype of the host organism so what is the meaning of this line obviously let's say if this is my cell if i have added a new dna here right so obviously this new dna will also express itself it will make the protein right that enzyme so because of that protein right a phenotypic expression will be given to the cell a new phenotypic expression will be given to the cell why am i saying new because this is the external gene that i have added the foreign gene the alien gene that i have added there clear now as i said bio process engineering or chemical engineering here the sterile conditions right the conditions which uh, the the you can say that the uh, the environment the, the environment which is free from infection that will be provided to that particular host cell clear bache so that it can grow okay so that our desired microorganism it can grow it can form that product in large quantity right bache so this comes under the bio process engineering like if you want the antibiotics the vaccine or if there is any other drug like this okay so these two are what they are the principles of biotechnology so ultimately that is what we have to do let's say this is a dna from this dna this is a particular gene you need you need to extract that gene right you need a kind of vector what is a vector vector is a gene taxi we will discuss each and every word in detail okay and that gene taxi will be used this desired dna will be attached to that gene taxi and you will get something recombinant right you will get the recombinant dna when you will introduce that recombinant dna into the host its phenotype will change ultimately that's the point okay ultimately that's the point so now before going ahead right before so we need to know that what are the foundations of biotechnology okay fine fine we are going to alter the dna hai na that is acceptable that is acceptable we are going to alter the dna right in that altered uh, uh, that altered dna will be transferred into a host cell in the host cell it will give the expression we will get a product new product we are going to get fine 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 but but on what basis we are thinking about it right we should have a base no we should have a base now just say let's say now you have decided that you will go for the neat examination samiksha sabha akankhya leharika this is what you people have decided that you guys are going to go uh, you guys are going to give what the the right the neat examination so obviously there should be a base like you are studying the biology you have studied the biology in class 11th and 12th right right but if you are not studying biology in class 11th and 12th if it is not your additional subject let's say if you are studying commerce or some other subject then do you think you can be the part of this examination of course not so there should be some foundation na there should be a base na right yes or no there should be a foundation na there should be a base na right so here what is that foundation of biotechnology right what is the foundation of biotechnology so when you talk about the foundation of biotechnology right bache when you talk about the foundation of biotechnology we talk about two things we talk about the plasmid we talk about the restriction endonuclease clear bache clear bache right sabha we talk about the plasmid we talk about the yes we talk about the plasmid and we talk about the restriction endonuclease right bache right so please write down then i will discuss it okay foundations of biotechnology so first of all plasmid tell me what is a plasmid then we will discuss it tell me what is a plasmid tell me what is a plasmid one is the plasmid and another is the one is the plasmid and another is the use of restriction into nucleus or simply the restriction endonucleases that we can use in vitro right that we can use in vitro okay these two are the foundations of the biotechnology so let me give you the brief idea about these two things so first of all the what is the plasmid plasmid is the extra chromosomal dna hope you know about it 
right it is the extra chromosomal dna but whenever we talk about a bacteria in a bacteria we know that right in a bacteria this is what we know that there is a nucleoid in the bacteria that is what we know na nucleoid is there nucleoid means naked dna nucleoid devoid of histone proteins not covered with the histone protein right but in the bacteria other than this nucleoid we have the right we have the ringlets we have this 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 is the extra chromosomal dna this is the plasmid clear bache this is the extra chromosomal dna this is the plasmid and bache it can replicate yeah basically it replicates without it replicates by its own okay it doesn't depend upon the chromosomal dna for its replication clear so plasmid is the extra chromosomal dna of course it is circular right of course it is circular extra chromosomal dna and this plasmid because it is a dna definitely it is having the genes right it is having the genes so that genes are going to give a special phenotypic expression to this particular bacteria okay yes but it is autonomously replicating it is extra chromosomal dna right it is having its own origin of replication now i think you can relate these terms you know na for the starting of the replication there should be a place from where the replication can start that is origin of replication that is origin of replication so everyone in the class do let me know in the chat section that in the prokaryotes how many origin of replications are present yes in the prokaryotes how many origin of replications are uh, origin of replication are present quick everyone in prokaryotes how many origin of replication are present there is only one so that's why prokaryotes are very good somebody yeah that's why prokaryotes are mono replicant so this is the meaning of a plasmid okay so now when you talk about the restriction endonucleases what are they of course they are the enzymes right of course they are the enzymes and these enzymes they make cut at a specific position okay these are the enzymes that can make cut at specific position so discovery of these two things are the foundations of the are the foundation of biotechnology these two things are the foundation of biotechnology right bachche so we will discuss about it in detail okay so let's start with the uh okay okay so let's start with that detail so basically in 1969 herbert boyer right in 19 69 the scientist name is herbert boyer everyone write down the scientist name in the chat section quick write down the scientist name in the chat section in 1969 herbert boyer he was studying the restriction enzymes of the e coli what he studied he studied the restriction enzymes of the e coli he studied that we can get that restriction into nuclear uh, we can get that restriction enzymes and that can make the cut in the dna at specific sites this is what he he studied and right this is what he studied and moreover we can use these restriction enzymes in vitro in vitro means in lab conditions we can use these enzymes to cut the dna right to cut the dna so this name you are not going to forget this name it is important clear bachche it is important clear bachche yes bachche is that clear yes so in 1969 herbert boyer performed studies on the restriction enzymes of of e coli e coli means escherichia coli okay right this is what and he observed that these enzymes can cut dna in a particular fashion in a particular fashion and can form sticky ends we will discuss about that sticky ends in detail okay this is what he observed we will discuss about these sticky ends okay 
ओके एंड देन स्टेनले कोहन राइट बच्चे राइट बच्चे देन अनदर नेम इज ऑफ स्टेनले कोहन दिस इज अबाउट द हर्बर्ट बॉयर देन अनदर नेम इज ऑफ स्टेनले कोहन बच्चे ही स्टार्टेड दैट इन बैक्टीरिया इन द साइटोप्लाजम ऑफ अ बैक्टीरियल सेल इन द साइटोप्लाजम ऑफ अ बैक्टीरियल सेल देर आर रिंगलेट्स ऑफ राइट वाई रिंगलेट्स बिकॉज दे आर सर्क्यूलर राइट देर आर रिंगलेट्स ऑफ डी एन ए देर आर रिंगलेट्स ऑफ डी एन ए दैट आर नोन एज प्लाजमेट्स राइट दीज आर द रिंगलेट्स ऑफ डी एन ए एंड दैट रिंगलेट्स दैट रिंगलेट्स फ्लॉट there in that cytoplasm this is what he studied fine so in stanley cohen what he studied he studied the ringlets right in bacterial cell there are the ringlets of dna and these ringlets you know what are they they are the plasmids they are uh, floating freely there in the cytoplasm and can self replicate okay and can self replicate okay and moreover that's not it cohen developed a method right cohen he developed a method to transfer right to transfer these ringlets to other cells that is the most important thing that is the most important thing right that it is not just about the plasmid right it is not just about the plasmid moreover he developed the ways by which we can transfer these plasmids right and we can transfer them to other cells basically we can reinsert these plasmids to the other cells right bache right bache this part clear tell me this part clear yes so if we combine these both the processes right let's say if we combine both the processes if we use these restriction enzymes if we use these plasmids don't you think with the help of these restriction enzymes we can make cut in dna at specific sites plus we can join this dna with these plasmid with the plasmid right we can fix that gene or the dna fragment desired dna fragment to that plasmid and then we can reinsert into other host cell right can we do that so these two these two are the foundations of the biotechnology isn't it these two are the foundations of the biotechnology clear bache clear bache so that is why the construction of first recombinant dna okay can you tell me about the first recombinant dna anyone anyone in the class do you know about the first recombinant dna it is given in ncert and important it is right but say from the biotechnology you are going to get same type of questions right just solve the previous year question papers even if you will solve the last 15 years pyqs na that will be more than sufficient for the biotechnology every year you are going to get question from these two chapters i still remember maybe i think uh, in 2021 total 11 questions were there from biotechnology principles and processes and biotechnology applications just imagine 11 question means 11 questions means how many marks yeah in 2021 it was like that 2021 or 2022 2021 yes in 2021 haan ji 11 questions means 44 marks so imagine 44 marks from these easy chapters so please pay attention okay please pay attention and you know if you are new what you have to do if you are new to our channel quickly hit the subscribe button right the subscribers are just 92.9k let's make it 100k asap quick so the construction of first our dna right it emerged from the possibility of which possibility right it emerged from the possibility of which possibility can you tell me han ji it emerged from a possibility which possibility 
the construction of first rdna important it is the construction of first rdna but it emerged from the possibility of linking the antibiotic resistant gene right the antibiotic resistant gene or in the salmonella right there is one bacteria known as salmonella typhi murium please note down the name of this bacteria it is sulfo uh, salmonella typhi murium so from this particular bacteria the antibiotic resistant gene it was taken its native plasmid was used the gene was fixed to that plasmid and then that recombinant plasmid was inserted in the it was inserted in the e coli so it was the first recombinant dna first recombinant dna so it emerged from the possibility of linking the antibiotic resistant gene right to the native plasmid of salmonella typhi murium and then that recombinant plasmid was transferred into the e coli obviously let's say this is the this is the antibiotic resistant gene that we have isolated obviously we are going to do it with the help of restriction endonuclease let's say here you have the plasmid right here you have the plasmid but say now we will use the same restriction enzyme right we are going to use the same restriction enzyme so this same restriction enzyme will make cut to the host dna the same restriction enzyme will make cut to the right to the plasmid the sticky ends will be generated we will discuss the sticky ends in detail and then finally what is going to happen we are going to join this gene of interest to this plasmid right to this plasmid and now this is our recombinant plasmid now what is it it is our recombinant plasmid so that is what we need to learn we need to talk about the enzymes here we need to talk about the ways by which we can fix this recomb uh, this desired gene to the plasmid we need to talk about the ways to transfer that right so this is what we are going to read in this particular chapter okay. right bachche this is what we are going to read in this particular chapter so please open your ncrt right please open your ncrt and please mark these points right bachche so here you can see the first example or the first instance of construction of artificial rdna right it emerged from the possibility of linking a gene encoding antibiotic resistant with a native plasmid right with the native plasmid of salmonella typhi murium so they can ask you the name of the uh, bacteria from where we have taken the plasmid they can ask you that which gene was used so you should know it is antibiotic resistant gene right so stanley cohen and herbert boyer they accomplished it in 1972 and yes here even the year is very important clear bachche right so they isolated the antibiotic resistant gene by cutting out a piece of dna from the plasmid which was responsible for conferring antibiotic resistance like from a plasmid there was a gene which was providing the antibiotic resistance so they make the cut obviously with the help of restriction endonuclease they took that gene right they took that gene fixed it with the plasmid of the salmonella typhi murium right so that's what they have done clear bachche right that's what they have done and you know that it was achieved with the help of restriction enzymes molecular caesars is that clear is that clear right is that clear so let's talk about the principles of these genetic engineering because now you know the basics here okay now you know the basics here fine fine so here you know in ncrt after all this a paragraph is written na where they talk about the gene transfer where they talk about all that thing so i think we should discuss that right we should discuss that a bit okay okay because uh, see uh, from this chapter itself there was a question in neat 2022 right where many teachers they got confused including me including me okay including me so what happened is ki we do not pay attention to that ncrt part remember in the last class also i told you that even in the genetic mapping even in the dna fingerprinting that polymorphism is very important so sometimes we we focus on the things that has been asked in the previous year papers right we do not read ncrt line by line whenever you read the ncrt you should have that open mind right you should have that perspective that i am from each line i can make the mcq right that's how you have to read the ncrt okay so now one student is asking that ma'am i have a confusion between plasmid and vector do not get confused plasmid is a type of vector what is a vector vector is a vehicle dna it's a gene taxi it is something that we are going to use in biotechnology to transfer the gene from one cell to another that is the meaning here understood that is the meaning here understood clear now let's focus here bachche let's focus here right why do i include ncrt like this because uh, uh, 
each and every line is important na ncrt is actually our holy book if you are the neat aspirant if you are a neat teacher then obviously it is the ncrt that we have to read multiple times right we should solve the questions on the basis of ncrt uh, again and again even if you think that yes i have mastered this chapter still you should practice the questions and trust me bio can that you people bio can that you so please be ready please be ready okay so see they are saying that you we know about the advantages of sexual reproduction can you tell me the advantages of sexual reproduction yes here they are saying the advantages we know that sexual reproduction is more advanced than asexual reproduction can you tell me why can you tell me why is it so why exactly leharika is right variations variations whenever we talk about the sexual reproduction we know that gamete fusion is involved gamete formation and gamete fusion is involved and when it comes to the gamete formation we know that in the meiosis there will be crossing over right so in the crossing over maternal and the paternal chromosome they will exchange their segments right you know that process in detail clear bache pankhuri ma'am has taken the classes on cell cycle and cell division hope you have seen that okay so basically crossing over will be there so because of that crossing over what is going to happen what is going to happen new combinations will be there that new combination will result in variations and variations are very important for the variations are very important for the survival in the changing condition right right the conditions are changing and to adapt in that condition variations are required and mutation and crossing over they are responsible and that is what we see in the case of sexual reproduction right but in the case of asexual reproduction asexual reproduction you know that basically clones are formed let's take the example of a bacteria one bacterial cell is forming two daughter cell right one bacterial cell it is dividing it is forming two daughter cells they are just like they are ditto like the parent cell because there is no crossing over there is no variation so asexual reproduction it preserves the genetic information as such right it preserves the genetic information as such but in the case of in the case of sexual reproduction genetic in information is not preserved right the variations will be created that's what you need to remember okay okay right bache so asexual reproduction it preserves the genetic information sometimes we do not understand the meaning of such simple lines right so pay attention asexual reproduction preserves the genetic information and sexual reproduction permits variation right so when you talk about the traditional hybridization procedures right that we have seen in the plant tissue culturing or in the animal breeding right what have we done they often lead to inclusion and multiplication of undesirable genes along with the desired one now i'll ask you one very simple question no doubt that chapter is not the part of your syllabus but i believe that you you have read that chapter right strategies for enhancement in food production so in that strategies for enhancement in food production chapter we discuss animal breeding we discuss plant breeding so we know that we looked for the superior parents superior male plant superior female plant we are going to hybridize them and then we are going to get what like we have done in the mendel's experiment also we are going to get what we are going to get the superior f1 individuals right this is that is how we make the hybrids right that is what we study in the strategies for enhancement in food production you select the superior male you select the superior female and you will get the superior progeny right and what is the meaning of being superior here having that better traits let's say there is a plant which is having better uh, drought resistance which is having better pest resistance which is giving us more yield we will prefer that plant na that's what we need na we need the plants which are infection free we need the plants which give us more seeds right we need the plants which are more resistant to the abiotic stress isn't it so we will select such plants we will propagate them we will make their hybrid that's the meaning of the hybrid but when it is a genetically modified organism here gene manipulation has been done here gene manipulation has been done means here the gene right here the gene manipulation gene manipulation means we have we have altered the chemistry of dna and rna we have changed the basis of dna and rna we have done the deletion and the addition right we have done the deletion and the addition clear bache whatever is required so how how can you say that this gmos they are better than hybrid how can we say on what basis we can say that gmos they are better than hybrids anyone anyone 
see in the gmos we do not need right we do not need crossing of parents we do not need the crossing of parents we do not need superior parents but here we need that right here we need that in the gmos we can right we can delete undesirable genes if we do not want something right if we do not want a particular gene product we can remove that gene but here in the hybrid right we are basically crossing the parents so obviously along with right along with the desired characters yes people along with desired characters undesired characters will also pass to progeny isn't it undesired characters are also pass to progeny that's the point right in the hybrids you will not see any new trait but here we can add new traits as well because we can put the we, we have to put the gene of for that particular trait and in the genetically modified organism you will see a new trait as well completely new traits here only the existing right here only the existing traits are improved right only the existing traits are improved that's the point only right that's the point only that's why genetically modified organisms they are better and traditional procedures they give just give us the hybrid having improved traits but the undesirable traits as well clear bache clear bache so what will be there in the techniques of genetic engineering the creation of recombinant dna the use of gene cloning and gene transfer right what are we going to do in this genetic engineering yes bachche please highlight this part there is a creation of recombinant dna there is a use of gene cloning there will be the transfer of gene right so use of our dna use of gene cloning and gene transfer right 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 yes bachche so that's how the genetically modified organisms they are better than the hybrids understood they are better than the hybrids clear bachche okay so let's discuss that in detail and please mark this point because it was also a question in e2023 right bachche so these are the three basic steps in genetic engineering of course there is no need to cram we know that first of all we need to identify the dna with the desirable gene right that which recombinant plasmid i am going to form okay it's a very bad example but obviously just just imagine just imagine if with the help of biotechnology right because these are not the traits it's some, some, this is not something that we can introduce with the genes these are your human virtues right just say let's say ki with the help of biotechnology i can make you sincere i can make you consistent i can make you determinant right just i am like here yeah, nahi yaar yeah, they are not studying properly i should introduce a gene for the consistency in their genome i should introduce the gene so that they will stay disciplined hai yeah, na imagine life will be easy then hai yeah, na life will be easy then so basically first of all i have to select right so let's say let's say in the case of chiku i'm like he nahi yaar i will give him the gene for consistency so i need to figure out that gene for consistency first firstly i need to identify that gene right that this is the gene for this is the gene for consistency hai na this is the gene for consistency now i need to introduce that in that chiku right i have to introduce that gene in that chiku boy theek hai then i have to maintain that gene in chiku's body so that that gene can express itself that's the point that is the point okay so identification of dna with the desirable gene introduction of that identified dna into the host so maintenance of that dna in the host and to make sure that that gene transfers to its progeny that it passes to its next generation clear bachche that is passes to its next generation clear 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 okay so look at these three steps right these three steps are explaining that what do you need for genetic engineering first of all you need the ways by which you can identify the dna with desirable gene you need the ways by which you can cut that desirable gene right then you have to introduce that gene into the host means you have to figure out the ways which will help in this transformation and then 
ऑब्वियसली दैट बायो प्रोसेस टेक्नोलॉजी क्लियर ऑब्वियसली दैट बायो प्रोसेस टेक्नोलॉजी डन बच्चे सो बिफोर स्टार्टिंग द टूल्स ऑफ रिकॉम्बिनेंट डी एन ए टेक्नोलॉजी आई एम राइटिंग डाउन द स्टेप्स हियर राइट डू यू नो द स्टेप्स Yes, do you know the steps of biotechnology? Before starting the tools of biotechnology, what am I going to do here? What am I going to do here? Saba, everyone in the class, please pay attention. Right? Let's write down the steps of this RDNA technology. Okay? Let's write down the steps of RDNA technology. Right? The steps of RDNA. technology so the very first thing is the very first thing is obviously the isolation right the very first thing is the isolation of dna you write down right we will use this slide again and again for the revision first is isolation of dna we need to isolate the dna everyone please write down first is isolation of uh, dna then is fragmentation right fragmentation to divide the dna into fragments so fragmentation of dna by restriction endonucleases yes so the first point is isolation of dna the second point is fragmentation of dna by restriction endonucleases right fragmentation of dna by restriction endonucleases third is isolation of desired dna fragments right now from that fragments we need to isolate our desired dna fragment please write down these steps okay then we will talk about the tools here fine so what is the first step what is the first step isolation of dna what is the second second step we have to cut that dna into fragments now from that fragments we have to select that this is the fragment that we need so isolation of desired dna fragment will be there and finally after its isolation we have to do the ligation means the attachment the joining the ligation of desired dna fragment vector okay two vector trust me everything will be clear firstly let me write down the steps here and let me start the tools okay so ligation of desired dna fragment to the into a vector clear bachche right into a vector and then transformation then we have to do the transformation of desired dna into host right we have to transfer that desired dna into host yes or no yes or no so when you have ligated the dna into the vectors dna right into a vector dna you have to transfer the desired dna the recombinant dna into the host then screening of cells the screening of cells for transformation for transformants we have to check that which cell is transformed or not and then right firstly screening of cells screening of cells for transformant we basically we have to check that which cells are transformed or not right right which cells are transformed or not and after that selection of transformed cells so we have to right first of all we have to screen the cells for transformation transformation and then selection of transformant cells and finally we have to maintain conditions proper conditions for the for that transformant cells and finally the extraction of product this is the rdna technology clear bachche this is the rdna technology right 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 bachche so isolation of dna fragmentation of dna by restriction into nucleases from that fragments extract or isolate your desired dna fragment ligate that desired dna fragment into vector transformation of that desired dna or you can say that recombinant dna into host then screening of cells for transformation and finally selection of transformant cell and then maintain okay grow host cell for production for large scale production and finally the extraction of product 
okay finally the extraction of product that is it these are the steps of recombinant dna technology these are the steps of these recombinant dna technology is that clear right these are the steps with that we have to follow if we want the rdna please take a screenshot of it or please write it down in your notebook clear bache Girija, please write down it in your notebook right bache so next is what next is the tools for rdna technology next is what next is the tools for rdna technology right now let's talk about the tools so very first thing is enzymes right this is a list and we have to read it read this chapter in this flow the very first thing is enzymes right what type of enzymes do we need the enzymes which will help us to extract the dna from the host cell right so first thing is the enzymes right bache second thing is the gel electrophoresis third thing is the vectors right third thing is what firstly you need the enzymes right which can help you to extract the dna which can then gel electrophoresis by which you can separate the fragmented dna desired fragmented dna then you need the vector right which is the gene taxi which is the gene taxi and then after after getting that right after that vectors we need to figure out the dna delivery system that how can we deliver how can we deliver our desired dna and finally we need the competent host these things are the this is what you need for the rdna technology again i'm repeating these are the steps for rdna technology these are the tools for rdna technology so let's start with our first tool that is enzymes okay let's start with our first tool that is enzymes so imagine this is a cell it can be any cell it can be a prokaryotic cell it can be a eukaryotic cell so ultimately if you want dna this is the first step of our dna technology now isolation of dna so for that first step we need dna hai na? right we need dna we need dna and how can we get that dna haryom ji how can we get the dna right we have to break the cell coverings we have to break the cell coverings if we want the dna so when it comes to enzymes bache, which enzymes are we going to talk about we'll start with the we'll start with the lysing enzymes right we'll start with the lysing enzymes lysing right means breakdown okay means breakdown the enzymes that can break the cell wall the outer coverings this is the first thing right the enzymes that can break the cell wall right which the enzymes that can break the cell wall is that clear is that clear lysing enzymes so let's say if it is a bacterial cell what type of cell it is if it is a bacterial cell now can you tell me about the bacterial cell wall you know in a bacterial cell there is a cell wall even there is a cell coat and then there is a very hard cell wall can you tell me about that cell wall that cell wall is made up of that cell wall is made up of yes when you talk about the bacterial cell wall it is made up of it is made up of obviously peptidoglycans or murines peptidoglycans or murines so when it comes to the bacterial cell so for that we need lysozyme do you know lysozyme which can destroy that bacterial cell wall this lysozyme is also present in our saliva also present in our tear also present in our intestinal secretions the lysozyme antimicrobial antibacterial it is so we can use this enzyme now let's say if it is a fungal cell if you need your dna from a fungal fungal cell right from a fungal cell so fungal cell wall is made up of chitin so obviously the enzyme is chitinase that we need the enzyme is chitinase that we need right the chitinase will dissolve the fungal cell wall and you can get your dna now let's say if it is a plant cell wall right if it is a plant cell from where you need your dna then of course what we have to do plant cell wall is having cellulose it is having hemicellulose it is having pectin so you can go for the enzyme cellulase we can use the enzyme pectinase are you getting it so these are the lysing enzymes which will help us to break the cell walls right these are the lysing enzymes that will help us to break the cell wall so now what is next next is the cleaving enzymes right this is about the lysing enzyme next is the 
cleaving enzyme right after lysis obviously we got r we have right we basically entered in the imagine it like this you have various doors you are playing a game you have various doors firstly you have to break that outer coverings then you have to enter in a cell then you have to take your dna right then you have to divide it into fragments you have to separate it so imagine it like this okay imagine it like this it's a story that is going on fine what is happening there is a story which is going on clear bache clear bache yes is it clear yes or no okay so next is what cleaving enzyme so when you talk about the cleaving enzyme you talk about the nucleases so what are nucleases right what are nucleases so nucleases they digest nucleic acid they are the one that are going to break the nucleotide in that uh, nucleic acid hai na so nucleases so in nucleases you have two categories you have exonucleases and you have endonuclease what do we have here we have exonuclease we have endonuclease that is what we have right so now bache when the word is exo exo means ends exo means ends endo means inside exo means ends endo means inside see that's why i always prefer right to teach molecular basis of inheritance after biotechnology because bache things are related right these things are related so basically you know that when it comes to the nucleic acid it is made up of nucleotide it is made up of nucleotide it is having what it's it is having a polynucleotide chain it is having a polynucleotide chain right it is having a polynucleotide chain many nucleotides are present there right bache so exonuclease means ends right so it will cut the dna strand it will cut the dna strand at terminals or you can say that at terminal ends it is not an enzyme which can make the cut within the that uh, uh, within that dna no it will cut the ends right the nucleotides which are present at the ends they will be cut by exonucleases clear bache they will be cut by exonucleases so the exonucleases even it makes the cut cut the dna right so basically it is going to make the cut in the single strand of dna imagine this is your this is your dna right so first of all exonucleases are going to make the cuts here here at the ends first thing secondly let's say if here in between right even if in in between the dna right let's say it is a double stranded dna but there is a gap here okay there is a gap here so exonuclease can make the cut here clear exonuclease can make the cut here as well so basically it prefers to cut the single strand and even if in double stranded dna there there if there are gaps then it can cut there okay then it can cut there that is what you need to remember so you cannot say that there is a specific site where exonuclease is going to make the cut no no there is no specific site right right there is no specific site okay where exonuclease will make the cut they cut at the ends right so this is what i'm writing that they act on single stranded dna single strand of dna and gaps present in double stranded dna and gaps present in double stranded uh oh gaps present in double stranded dna done bache that is how the exonuclease is going to make the cut bache clear bache so here right the fragments that are formed by exonuclease they are not used in the genetic engineering okay we don't need them in genetic engineering it's simply the enzyme which is making cuts at the end now come to the endonuclease so it will cut the dna strand at any point other than at any point other than terminal ends basically it will not make cuts at the ends right let's say if this is the dna that we have okay so if it is an endonuclease right it will not make the uh, cut set ends but any point within the dna any point within the dna okay any point within the dna now now this is about the endonuclease so 
when you are using the word restriction endonuclease then you are specifying it that it will make that cut at a specific site only then you cannot say that okay, it can cut any a part of dna other than terminal ends no then it will be very specific it is going to make the cuts at the specific ends is that clear sure so this point is important pallavi that it cut the dna strand at any point other than terminal ends and second is they cleave one or both the strands of double d uh, stranded dna endonuclease can cut one or both or both the strands of double stranded dna and this enzyme the these fragments are used in genetic engineering okay these fragments are used in genetic engineering for genetic engineering also i'll be using the short form ge okay so that is how this is this is about the cleaving enzyme the nucleases exonuclease and endonuclease so now let's discuss the restriction endonuclease in detail okay okay so the main main enzyme that we have to discuss here is your restriction endonuclease okay so bachche it is also known as molecular seizure yes it is also known as molecular seizure it is also known as chemical scalpel it is also known as molecular knife okay this restriction endonuclease right it is the most important enzyme here what is it it's a type of endonuclease what is it it's a type of endonuclease understood it's a type of endonuclease clear bachche yes is it clear botany neat master why a big uh, question why these enzymes do not cut host bacterial dna botany neat master please allow me 5 minutes we will discuss the restriction modification system and you will get the answer of your question so lysing enzymes clear exonuclease endonuclease clear so this is the endonuclease nucleus which will be used in the which will be used in the genetic engineering and that is your restriction endonuclease it's a molecular seizure chemical scalpel or molecular knife these are the other names of this restriction endonuclease why this restriction endonuclease is so uh, so important because it cut the dna at specific sites only right it cut the dna at specific sites only clear bachche it cut the dna at are at specific site only now when it comes to the specific sites what are that specific sites bachche actually they are the palindromic sequences right what are they that sites are actually the palindromes they are the palindromic sequences now the point is what is the meaning of palindromic sequences it's very simple bachche you know you you have seen that words now jaise let's say if it is mom if you are reading it in this direction the spellings are same here right the spellings are same here let's say mom m o m m o m even if you are reading it from this to this side mom this to this side mom let's say dad same hai na or radar there are many words so such words are considered as palindromes right which are having same spellings from both the sides right like malayalam malayalam hai na right so these are palindromes these are palindromes these are palindromic sequences leharika is right wow hai na nitin n i t i n n i t i n very good very good excellent right so such type of such type of words are palindromes and in the dna we also see that there are such sequences right and we call them as palindromic sequences like i'll take the example of one sequence there is one enzyme that is known as eco r1 right it is the name of a restriction enzyme fine bachche it is the name of a restriction enzyme eco r1 what is it it is eco r1 so this eco r1 it can identify this sequence it is gatus that's how i remember it gatus g a a t t c 
जी ए ए टी टी सी क्लियर बच्चे वॉट इज इट इट्स जी ए ए टी टी सी जी ए ए टी टी सी राइट सो दिस रिस्ट्रिक्शन एंजाइम इट कैन रिकोगनाइज दिस पर्टिकुलर पेलेंड्रोमिक सीक्वेंस इट कैन ओनली रिकोगनाइज दिस सीक्वेंस एंड इट कैन मेक द कट्स राइट इट कैन मेक द कट्स सो जी ए ए टी टी सी जी ए ए टी टी सी इट्स अ प्रीवियस ईयर क्वेश्चन बच्चे इट हैज बीन आज दीड ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी एज वेल ओके सो दिस इज वॉट यू नीड टू रिमेंबर जी ए ए टी टी सी राइट सो इवन इफ यू आर रीडिंग इट इन दिस डायरेक्शन सी जी ए टी टी सी इवन इफ यू आर रीडिंग द अदर स्टैंड इट इज जी ए टी टी सी सो वॉट यू नीड टू रिमेंबर हियर अ वेरी कॉमन मिस्टेक आई स्टिल रिमेंबर देर वॉज अ क्वेश्चन इन दिस वॉज अ क्वेश्चन इन नीट ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी दे आस्क द सीक्वेंस रिकोगनाइज बाय दे आस्क द सीक्वेंस रिकोगनाइज बाय इको आर वन एंड इट वॉज गिविन जी ए ए टी टी सी बट स्टूडेंट्स यू डू नॉट पे अटेंशन राइट राइट यू डू नॉट पे अटेंशन ऑन दिस थिंग दैट दिस इज द फाइव डैश एंड फ्रॉम वेयर द जी विल स्टार्ट राइट रिमेंबर इट लाइक दिस टू जी 3G, 4G, 5G, right? We have that networks now. 2G, 3G, 4G, same way 5G, right? So this G will always be starting from the five prime end, okay? From the five prime end. That's what you need to remember, okay? So fine, okay, ma'am. This is understandable that restriction enzymes they are going to cut the DNA at a specific site. They are going to make the cut at the palindromic. right they are basically going to recognize the palindromic sequences okay fine it is acceptable right it is acceptable but the point is where are they going to cut the dna like what are they going to hydrolyze so this is something important that your restriction enzymes right bachche that your restriction enzymes they hydrolyze they hydrolyze phosphodiester backbone okay phosphodiester bond or phosphodiester backbone basically these enzymes right these enzymes yes bachche what will they do what will they do they will cut the sugar phosphate backbone right sugar phosphate backbone and you know that sugar phosphate backbone is joined with the phosphodiester bond that is what you need to remember understood understood that is another important question for the mcqs fine fine re it hydrolyzes the phosphodiester bond it hydrolyzes the phosphodiester bond right bachche so look at the sequence it is same from 5 prime to 3 prime direction right right 5 prime to 3 prime direction and 3 prime to 5 prime direction both the strand this is a palindromic sequence now one more thing one more thing it's not always mandatory that these sequences should be like this only right it's not always mandatory this let's say if i'm taking random example a b c d e a b c d e it's not mandatory that they should be present like this only no no sometimes na these bases are present like this let's say i'm just get taking some, some random bases okay it's not mandatory that they should be complementary to each other like this only like in the case of gatus sometimes right see one sequence is written here another is here again they are the palindromes because if you are reading it from this side to this side or this side to this side you are getting same sequence so restriction enzyme will make cut here within the sugar phosphate backbone and then that is how you will get the ends fine that is how you will get the ends so please keep it in your mind right right so palindromic sequence clear palindromic sequence clear first of all let's talk about its nomenclature and all and then i will tell you about the sticky ends and about the about the blunt end so this point clear sure bachche this point clear yes yes so now one student was asking a question no that it is a big question why this these enzymes are not cutting the bacterial dna let's discuss that okay let's discuss that please write down one more point that restriction enzymes they are obtained from bacterial cells only right they are obtained from bacterial cells only we are not going to get them from eukaryotic cell clear you are not going to get them from eukaryotic cell you are going to get them from the prokaryotic cell now come to this point so now in 1963 enzymes restricting enzymes restricting the growth of bacteriophage dna or bacteriophage in e coli 
were isolated. Like in ice, in 1963, scientists they isolated the enzymes that were restricting the growth of bacteriophage in E. coli. Okay. Now, what is a bacteriophage? I hope you remember. It's a hyperparasite. What is the meaning of a hyperparasite, students? What is the meaning of a hyperparasite? Something which is parasitic on a parasite. Right? What is the meaning of hyperparasite? Something which is parasitic on a parasite. Just say, let's say you are you are parasite on me and someone else is parasite on you. They say Vandana is attending our classes daily. Okay? Vandana is just getting knowledge from me. Okay? So Vandana is a parasite on me. And let's say Priya. Priya is Vandana's friend and Priya is using Vandana's notes. So Priya will be the hyperparasite. That's the thing. So hyperparasite is something which is parasite on something which is parasit parasite on parasite. Okay? So you know that bacteria. This is a bacteria. Let's say this is your E. coli. And here you have the bacteriophage. What is a bacteriophage? Bacteriophage is a virus. It is a virus. It is a virus that infects bacteria. It is a Priya virus that infects bacteria. Now what is going to happen here? Yes people, what is going to happen here? Let's say this bacteriophage, this bacteriophage, it will try to insert its DNA into the host. Remember Hershey and Chase experiment? Yes. Do you remember Hershey and Chase experiment from molecular basis of inheritance, the transduction experiment? So actually, when a, when a uh, virus infects the bacterial cell, na, or simply when a cell is used to transfer the genetic material into another cell, we use the word transduction for that. Right? We use the word transduction for that. So here what is happening, this bacteriophage, it is which is a virus, right? This bacteriophage, which is a this bacteriophage which is a virus this virus is infecting this particular cell this virus is infecting this particular bacteria and what that virus is going to do virus will inject its genome here its genetic material here its genetic material will get accumulated here in bacteria's dna it will use the machinery of the bacteria and it will make its multiple copies that's how viruses survive. We know that viruses are what? Viruses are the non-living organisms outside the body. They are the connecting link in between the living organisms and the non-living organisms. So now because they are the connecting link outside the body, right? They are just the inert proteins. Okay, there's something, you know, something which is not reactive, a protein like this. But once they get the living body, once they get the living body, they start using the machinery of that living cell and they start making their multiple copies okay that's how bacteria survive during that covid wave it was suggested now that we should not go outside we should not provide the host right why 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 it was like this why that quarantine was there why why uh, the, our movement was restricted because we are the right we were the host for that particular virus if virus will not get the other host virus will not survive right virus will not survive that is the agenda Right, that was the agenda of that thing that isolation is important. Okay, right, 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 that is the point. So now here, here, this is how a bacteriophage is going to grow. But in 1963, scientists, they isolated two enzymes that, that, that are not allowing this bacteriophage DNA to grow within the bacteria. And that, that enzymes, they make the restriction system, right? That, that are the enzymes that makes the restriction system. Restriction system is something which is not letting bacteriophage to grow within the E. coli and here this restriction system is having two enzymes one is your restriction enzyme obviously this is the restriction enzyme right this restriction enzyme is going to identify this restriction enzyme is going to cut the virus DNA it is going to cut the virus DNA isn't it it is the restriction enzyme right which a restriction means you know the meaning of restriction Right, it refers to the function of these enzymes in restricting the propagation of foreign DNA within the cell. The term is restriction here. What is the term here? Restriction here. So restriction, it is going to restrict, it is going to stop. Basically the term restriction refers to the function of these enzymes. enzymes to not let to not let the 
I don't know what. Okay, so the term restriction refers to the function of the enzymes to not let the, or you can say that to, to restrict the growth of, to restrict the growth of bacteriophage within bacteria. Okay, within bacteria understood so restriction the term restriction refers to the enzyme it refers to the enzyme yes but it refers to the the their function where these enzymes are not letting the bacteriophage to grow within bacteria it is restricting it right it is restricting it right it is restricting the growth of bacteriophage within bacteria right right within bacteria or instead of bacteriophage you can simply say any foreign dna right any foreign dna so these enzymes are not letting it to grow this first point clear the second point is in this restriction system the second enzyme is your modification enzyme right the second enzyme is your modification enzyme now now let's understand the role of that modification enzyme right i'll start with a very simple thing i'll start with a very simple thing see no doubt this enzyme will identify a particular sequence it will make the cut there it will not let that foreign uh, dna to grow but now my point is here in the e coli basically we are getting this restriction enzyme from e coli now obviously let's say if that is a if this is a particular enzyme this enzyme can also identify the sequence here now it can also identify the sequence here now in the eukaryote in the in the e coli is the dna yes or no priya this particular enzyme can also identify the sequences that specific sequences in e coli is dna but still that is not the case why because e coli is like i know how to protect myself right i how to protect myself this is some snakes they are venomous right some snakes they are venomous venomous means they are poisonous right but their poison is not going to kill them isn't it their poison is not going to kill them let's take a very wonderful example of lysosomes right let's take a very wonderful example of lysosome lysosomes you know na you know lysosomes right they are the cell organelles which are present in a eukaryotic cell they are the suicidal bags right they are the suicidal bags but that suicidal bags they have enzymes that can destroy everything around right but that enzymes are not destroying the lysosome because they know how to right 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 they know how to protect right that lysosome know how to protect itself it is having that special modifications same is the case here same is the case here now in the e coli no doubt restriction enzyme is there which recognizes a specific sequence and make the cuts there but in the e coli parallelly there is one another enzyme which is known as modification enzyme and that enzyme will add the methyl group right it adds methyl group to the bases to the bases identified by restriction enzyme to the bases identified by restriction enzyme are you getting it are you getting it yes bachche so what is going to happen here right these modification enzymes they will add methyl group to the bases identified by restriction enzyme clear bachche jaise let's say if restriction enzyme is identifying six bases okay six bases so let's say two two to three bases this modification enzyme will add the methyl group so because of that methyl group right the restriction enzyme will not be able to figure out that that is the particular sequence that i need to cut okay so that's the beauty of ad adding the methyl group there okay okay so modification enzyme it adds methyl group to one or two bases one or two bases of the sequence of the sequence identified by restriction enzyme so that is how this restriction enzyme is not cutting okay that is how the restriction enzyme is not cutting right not cutting its host cell right its own cells dna clear bachche 
क्लियर बच्चे सो दिस इज अबाउट द डिस्कवरी ऑफ दीज रिस्ट्रिक्शन एंजाइम सो नाउ द नेक्स्ट पॉइंट इज बेसिकली आबर्ट आबर नाथन एंड स्मिथ डू यू नो द नेम ऑफ दीज साइंटिस्ट आबर नाथन एंड स्मिथ आबर नाथन एंड स्मिथ इन 1978, right? So they, yes, they discovered the eco R1. Do you know that they discovered the eco R1, and in 1978 they got Nobel Prize for it. Okay. So Aber, Nathar, and Smith they discovered the eco R1 in 1978. They got the Nobel Prize for it. Nobel Prize for it. Understood? Yes, but she understood. Sure, 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 sure. But still, can you tell me the first restriction endonuclease? Right? Can you just tell me the first site-specific restriction endonuclease? Can you tell me which was the first restriction endonuclease that was identified? Okay, so it was Hind two. So first restriction endonuclease that was identified. It was Hind two, right? So this Hind two it recognized a sequence having. It recognizes the it recognizes the sequence of six base pair. This is important. Okay, it is important. i am not uh, telling you to remember that six base pairs but at least you should know that it recognizes the sequence having six base pairs what is it hind two and here in your notes uh, okay yes here in your notes you can also include that this enzyme used to give you blunt ends we will discuss the blunt ends and the meaning of blunt ends and the sticky ends but this is what you can note down okay blunt ends so actually hind two was identified but you know its sequence it was identified 5 years later wait i'll tell you it is it is given in ncert hmm okay i don't think that i have taken that screenshot okay but still this is what you need to remember okay you can read it in your book yes you can read it in your book fine okay here it is sorry so the rest first restriction endonuclease hind2 whose functioning depended on a specific dna nucleotide sequence was isolated it was isolated and characterized 5 years later right the first restriction endonuclease it was hind2 but the sequence right on uh, the sequence on which its functioning was depending it was isolated and characterized 5 years later okay 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 then bachi and that sequence is having six base pairs and the sequence which is identified by these enzymes is known as recognition sequence or the cloning site or the restriction sites that's all right recognition sequence cloning sites or the restriction site and today bachche right we have uh, isolated over 230 strains of bacteria uh, we have isolated more than 900 restriction enzymes that can be has uh, that have been isolated from 230 strains of bacteria right and these enzymes they recognize different recognition sequences they are not recognizing same sequences but they are recognizing different recognition sequences so this part clear this part clear so now let's talk about the nomenclature okay now let's talk about the nomenclature of these enzymes okay so trust me this chapter is very simple okay so nomenclature so see we have e co r1 so when you talk about the first letter first letter what is that first letter tell me first letter it signifies what first letter is the yes first letter signifies what nandini niharika liharika sabha priya first letter it it is derived from the name of the bacteria right it is derived from the it is derived from the from the genus of that bacteria hai na basically from bacteria we are going to get it so this shows the genus name right it indicates bacterial genus 
right it indicates bacterial genus and we have to write it in italics okay so here obviously it is not written in italics but yes right it should be in italics okay the second and third letter second and third letter they shows the species name okay species name and we have to write it in c the way should be like this it should be in upper case these two should be in lower case that's mandatory fine that these two should be in lower case so second and third letter it it uh, it denotes the species name and it should be also be in italics clear bachche and what about the r here yes please tell me what about the r here r is going to tell us about the r is going to tell us about the yes is it about the strain definitely the fourth letter indicates the strain of the bacteria right this is the fourth letter that indicates the strain of bacteria and then the last one it is these are the roman numericals it should be written in romans right not normally like 1 2 3 and 4 no it should be written in romans bachche right bachche so it signify the order in which enzyme were isolated right right it signifies the order the order in which in which enzyme was isolated from that particular strain of bacteria So this is about the nomenclature and yes you have to remember it mcq will come from this part right mcq will come from this part okay and fourth letter as i said it indicates the strain of bacteria and yes you have to write it in upper letters fine so this is all about the uh, nomenclature right this is all about the nomenclature and uh, see it is also given in ncrt eco r13 so ashershia coli ry113 so r is derived from the name of the name of the strain theek hai bachche so that is what you need to remember okay that is what you need to remember so now let's talk about the sticky ends and the blunt ends and then we will talk about the types of restriction nucle endonucleases the examples then we will move to the cloning vectors part fine cloning vectors part sir ma'am roman part please bachche roman roman numericals don't you know that's how we write 1 2 3 4 so whenever you uh, you are going to write down the strain na strain so it should be written like this just see hind two hind two okay so this two what is it number the order hai na okay so now uh, we know about the two types of ends the sticky ends and the blunt ends the sticky ends and the blunt ends so what is the meaning of this see ultimately restriction endonucleases they are going to they are going to hydrolyze the phosphodiester bond right it hydrolyzes phosphodiester bond right it hydrolyzes phospho diester bond basically it is going to break that sugar phosphate backbone so now we have the best example of eco r1 right eco r1 which sequence is identified by eco r1 everyone please repeat it in the chat section which sequence is identified from eco r1 which sequence is identified from eco r1 it is get us gaa ttc it is gaa ttc now how this enzyme is going to make the cut see it will make the cut little away from the center what is the meaning here let's say this is a sequence right this is the sequence that we have it is that palindromic sequence that we have guys are you getting it yes tell me are you out of energy or still you are feeling charged up ha huh? tell me we can end the class trust me it's too cold here even i don't want to take the class we can end the class tell me you want me to continue the class or we can end it
श्योर पक्का श्योर सो प्लीज पे अटेंशन एंड आंसर द क्वेश्चन दैट आर मास्किंग सो इट इज जी ए ए टी टी सी एवरी वन रिपीट गैटर्स जी ए ए टी टी सी सो दिस इज द बेस दिस इज द सीक्वेंस दिस इज द पेलिंड्रॉमिक सीक्वेंस आइडेंटिफाइड बाई इको आर वन नाउ दिस इज नॉट गोइंग टू मेक द कट एट द सेंटर इन द एन सी आर टी इट इज रिटर्न इट इज गोइंग टू कट द इट इज गोइंग टू मेक द कट अ लिटल अवे फ्रॉम द सेंटर वॉट इज द मीनिंग वॉट इज द मीनिंग हियर right see this it is not going to make the cut here 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 it is going to make the cut here little away from the center in between these two bases in between these two bases and on the another strand also it will make the cut in between the same bases so basically if i am saying g a a t t c g a a t t c so this eco r1 is going to hydrolyze the phosphodiester bond it is going to hydrolyze the phosphodiester bond in between g and a only on this strand as well as on this strand okay on this strand as well as on this strand it's not like that that on one strand it is hydrolyzing the sugar phosphate backbone in between g and a and here it is hydrolyzing it in it in between a and a no 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 it will break it in it in between g a g a understood in between g a and g a is that clear right see understand it like this this is a dna sequence you know na sugar nitrogenous base right sugar nitrogenous base phosphate sugar nitrogenous base phosphate that's the story and here there will be the phosphodiester bond hai na here there will be the phosphodiester bond so this restriction endonuclease it is going to hydrolyze this sugar phosphate backbone because it has to separate this g and a so it will hydrolyze this sugar phosphate backbone here okay it is going to hydrolyze this sugar phosphate backbone here that's why we are drawing it like this and even if it is the this strand or this strand the cut will be made in between g a right in between g a clear bachche fine in between g a okay clear so now let's say if it is going to make the cut here what will happen right i'm not drawing uh, double bond or triple bond hope you remember that g a is going to form three hydrogen bond with cytosine a is going to form two hydrogen bond with thymine theek okay? hai so just look at this is it so don't you think if i'm going to make the cuts here this is what i'm going to get yes this is what i'm going to get ga that's how this enzyme uh, mr tom boy that's how this enzyme is operating okay it identifies the bond there only okay and as i said it has to make it little away from the center why because it is going to generate the sticky ends tell me first first of all tell me this like if i'm going to make the if i'm going to hydrolyze a uh, ga bond in between ga and the ga here that is what i'm going to get of course that is what i'm going to get hai na hai na nikita that is what we are going to get hai na see the bond the sugar phosphate in between ga and ga it is hydrolyzed so these are two sticky ends why are we calling them as sticky ends because bachche they are complementary overhangs they are complementary overhangs they are actually complementary to each other what is the meaning of this line let's say if you will bring it closer right if you will bring the sequence closer right you know that adenine will form two hydrogen bonds with thymine right and adenine will form two hydrogen bonds with thymine that is how it is going to work 
right these th this part is complementary to this part it's like two magnets right it's like two magnets or uh, not just the magnet you can say you have that iron and the magnet here right they will show the attraction hai na so same is the case here so they are complementary overhangs complementary to each other complementary to each other so if i will bring this sequence nearby they will form hydrogen bonds and finally right the sugar phosphate backbone it will be ligated by dna ligase that's how it works hai na that's how it works clear they are complementary overhangs these are the sticky ends these are the sticky ends and we need them for genetic engineering right niharika we need them for genetic engineering why what is the reason see first of all keep it keep this thing in your mind that same restriction enzyme is used same restriction enzyme is used to make cut in host dna host is the one from where we need to extract our desired dna in host dna and in plasmids dna or in vectors dna right or in vectors dna see let's say we are using this eco r1 only okay let's consider this example right do not forget 5g here do not forget 5g here let's say it's your host's dna now here you have the plasmid here you have the plasmid bachche if i'm using eco r1 i told you leharika that these restriction enzymes they are very specific they will uh, they will recognize a specific sequence right in all the cases the restriction enzyme eco r1 is going to recognize gaa ttc only so if i am using the same restriction enzyme that is uh, eco r1 so obviously in the host's dna also this is the sequence that will be identified by eco r1 it is going to make the cuts here now in the plasmids dna also in the plasmids dna also the eco r1 will recognize same sequence yes bachche the eco r1 is going to recognize same sequence am i right am i right so obviously because of that what will i get yes this is what i'm going to get from this side and here from this side of course this is what i'm going to get from this side like this and this this and this but if i want to like let's say let me i don't want you people to get confused this is what i'm going to get from the host dna and are my bad Hmm. Yes, this is what I'm going to get from host side. This is what I'm going to get from Yes, bache. This is what I'm going to get from host side. This is what I'm going to get from plasmid side because I'm using the same eco R1. I'm using the same eco R1. So now, if I want to join this part with this part can i can i yes nandini if i want to join this part of my host dna with the with this part of my plasmids dna can i yes tell me can i quick everyone please revert of course of course because they are complementary to each other they are complementary to each other so that is what i am going to get that is what i am going to get isn't it isn't it this part this part in greenish color is telling me about the host's dna 
okay and this part in white color is telling me about the plasmids dna so i am joining their dna how am i join joining it because they are complementary over hands when they will come closer they are going to form the hydrogen bonds and moreover moreover bache finally the sugar phosphate backbone it will be attached with the help of dna ligase right so that is why dna ligase is considered as the molecular glue okay it will join these molecules how because it will form the it will join it will form the uh, it will join the sugar phosphate backbone here understood it will join this sugar phosphate backbone here so now see the host dna will join with the plasmids dna now this is the recombinant that you are going to get this is the recombinant now you will get the recombinant plasmid because you have attached that host dna to the plasmid right right so that is the beauty of sticky ends that is the beauty of sticky ends so it's not mandatory that all the restriction enzymes are going to make the sticky ends some of them they also make blunt ends right blunt ends but yes sticky ends are also known as remember sticky ends are also known as cohesive ends or cohesive sites okay and your blunt ends they are also known as staggered ends okay that's the point so now what is the difference in sticky ends and blunt ends can you give me the example of any restriction endonuclease that cuts that forms the sticky that forms the blunt end huh anyone anyone hind to right hind to so gtc gac this is the sequence that is identified by your g t c g a c this is the sequence that is identified by your yes bachche hind 2 hind 2 used to give the blunt ends hind 2 is going to give us the blunt ends so when it is the blunt end na so the cut will be there in the center let's say it will hydrolyze this this the sugar phosphate backbone in between g c in between g c like this so that is what you are going to get that is what you are going to get that is what you are going to get when it is the blunt end so obviously if blunt ends will be produced by the plasmid also by the host dna also then how can you join it right you do not have the complementary overhangs right but hey see i repeat this point every time whenever i teach biotechnology i always used to say whenever you perform the experiments of molecular genetics what do you used to do you mix water in water right it's not like that that you will go right and you will get a proper uh, you know you will go and you will get a proper uh, you will uh, you know in a lab you will see that proper dna helically coiled in front of you ki oh please come and please cut my sugar phosphate backbone no it's not like that you will have chemicals you will have solutions in that chemicals you will put another chemicals sometimes you will observe the precipitation sometimes you will observe the color change right sometimes you will perform some experiments that uh, where under the machines you are going to check your results it's like that right it's not like that the dna is present like this cure please come and please cut me no 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 it's never like that it's like mixing water in mix water right that water is actually not water it's a solution but mixing water in water it's like that theek hai priya it's like that theek hai so so now when we'll have sticky ends there are chances that when we will provide them suitable conditions they will form hydrogen bonds with each other they will form hydrogen bonds with each other but it's not mandatory it's not mandatory clear clear so so when they are the when they are the blunt ends how can we use them in the genetic engineering how can i take this piece right and i'll tell my plasmid oh please yaar please yaar fix it with you fix it with you no no so in that case you know what we do right we used to add bases here we used to make them we have to make them sticky right we have to add the bases right and then we will make them sticky theek hai so please remember hind to used to give you blunt eh, hind to gives you blunt ends theek hai and we have one more enzyme that is hind 3 please do not confuse it will give you sticky ends so in the paper the question can come people 
right the question can come which enzymes used to give which enzyme gives sticky ends which enzyme give blunt ends so him the two two second letter right b b blunt that's how i remember second letter b b blunt right third letter th c sticky although it is not making sense but c s okay you can take it all together so please remember this okay please remember this done so there are many 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 examples of such restriction enzymes i have added a table for you people okay they say eco r1 you should know bmh1 hind3 tac1 hind2 okay this is not hind2 it is uh, okay hind2 sam 3a that's not so important so you should know about it okay eco r5 it used to give blood it gives blood ends eco r5 eco r1 sticky ends eco r5 blunt ends okay so maybe this picture is not so clear i'll i'll post it in the right i'll post it in the telegram group okay so here you can see this picture the vector dna and the foreign dna right the vector dna and the foreign dna so same eco r1 is used you will get sticky ends you'll join them hydrogen bond will fix that bases and finally dna ligase will join that sugar phosphate backbone okay it will join that sugar phosphate backbone got it done so bache let now let's talk about the types of restriction enzymes okay and then there will be a break and then we'll start the vectors do you know we have three types of restriction endonucleases do you know that we have three types of restriction endonucleases type 1 type 2 type 3 type 1 type 2 type 3 okay type 1 type 2 type 3 what do you think what do you think how that restriction endonuclease got to know ki okay fine this is the point where i need to make the cut how 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 obviously that restriction enzymes they will inspect the length of dna they will recognize that specific sequence then they will make the cut okay so it was a previous year question that do restriction endonucleases do restriction enzymes they inspect the length of dna they check the length of dna yes it's a yes okay it's a yes clear 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 it is a yes okay so now when you talk about the restriction endonuclease type 1 this type 1 it can inspect the length of dna but cannot make the cut it can inspect the length of dna so that it can recognize a particular sequence but it cannot make the cut same same for this a uh, restriction endonuclease type 3 it can also inspect the length of dna can recognize like specific sequence but cannot make the cut but cannot make the cut okay okay but when it is a restriction endonuclease type 2 it can inspect the length of dna it can recognize specific sequence and can cut the dna so obviously this is the restriction enzyme that will be used in genetic engineering right right this is the one that is used in genetic engineering clear bache right this is the one 
which is used in genetic engineering understood understood okay fine so restriction endonuclease type 1 type 2 type 3 so these enzymes they need atp magnesium ion and other required requirements are also there for type 2 only magnesium ion is required not the atp here also atp and magnesium ion both are required so that's what you people need to understand okay okay so now let's talk about the uh, cloning vector but before that let's finish the enzymes topic so let's revise it very quickly then there will be a break okay so so we started with the we started with the steps of recombinant dna right right bache yes bache even adeno, uh, adenosyl methionine is also used noor okay so steps of our dna technology first of all we have to isolate the dna yeah. for that we need the enzymes we need lysing enzymes we need cleaving enzymes okay these are the steps so after steps when you talk about the yes after steps when you talk about the tools enzymes gel electrophoresis vectors dna delivery system and competent host that's what we need so when we start the story with the enzymes we know that firstly we need to talk about the lysing enzyme okay so lysing enzymes may we have examples if we need to take the dna from bacterial cell we need lysozyme if we need to take the dna from the fungal cell chitinase if we need to take the dna from the plant cell it will be cellulase and the pectinase right so when you talk about the cleaving enzyme nucleases is there okay exonuclease and endonuclease and for the genetic engineering we need restriction endonuclease because it makes the cut at the specific site specific ends and that sequences are that sequences are that sequences are palindromic sequences clear bache that sequences are palindromic sequences right bache so eco r1 this is the example that we uh, studied now it is the gattis that will be recognized by this eco r1 so restriction enzymes they always hydrolyze the phosphodiester backbone clear bache they are always identified from they are always isolated from the bacterial cells your eukaryotic cells will not give you the restriction enzymes okay okay so in 1963 from e coli restriction system was isolated which includes restriction enzyme and modification system we discussed about it and then then bache we talked about the uh, the eco r1 the nomenclature and finally 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 we even discuss the sticky ends and the blunt ends clear bache the sticky ends and the blunt ends understood understood so other than that already i told you right other than that already i told you that what do you need what do you need other than that you need you need you need dna ligase which is a molecular glue right i told you about its function as well it is going to ligate the sugar phosphate backbone and you know alkaline phosphatases are also used do you know that alkaline phosphatases are also used isn't it alkaline phosphatases are also used alkaline phosphatases they are also used in the genetic engineering actually these phosphatases they remove the phosphate group do you know that what will they do they remove phosphate group from 5 dash end you know now 5 dash end is having phosphate group leaving only so when phosphate group is removed only oh oh group oh group will be remained there so why is it so to prevent self ligation right to prevent self ligation i hope you remember that bonding that 3 dash 5 dash phosphodiester bond like let's say here you have sugar you have nitrogenous base you have phosphate you have sugar you have nitrogenous base you have phosphate if you remember how the nucleotides right they will they will form polymers the sugar this sugar here will be having oh group that will bond, form bond with the bond with the phosphate of the next nucleotide at 5 dash end okay so if we will remove the phosphate here of course of course this nucleotide will not be able to form the bond Hey na? so sometimes you know let's say we have the dna fragments we don't want them to self ligate to join right so if we will remove that just say let's say even if you have a fragment 5 dash and 3 dash and somewhere it can form the bond it can also become circular it can also join with other dna strands so when we don't want it this is what we are going to do okay okay 
Understood? So this is uh, about the enzymes and sometimes even in this uh, genetic engineering, we need the DNA, we need the polymerases enzymes also. Right? We need the polymerases enzyme also. So you know that polymerase, it is going to form the polymers. This is, let's say if you have DNA polymers, polymerase, it can form the DNA when required. Right? If you have RNA polymerase, it can use the, let's say if it is a DNA dependent RNA polymerase if we need it or sometimes mainly it is the DNA that we need so it can also be RNA dependent DNA polymerase so can you tell me when I'm saying RNA dependent DNA polymerase which enzyme I'm talking about here can you tell me which enzyme we are discussing here this I said no polymerase enzyme DNA dependent DNA polymerase that will use DNA template and that can form the DNA RNA dependent DNA polymerase do you remember this reverse transcriptase right reverse transcriptase that's the enzyme bachi. reverse transcriptase why reverse transcriptase because in reverse transcriptase from the mRNA we are making a complementary DNA from the single stranded mRNA we are making a single stranded DNA so RNA template is used that's why RNA dependent DNA is formed that's why DNA polymerase okay RNA dependent DNA polymerase these are the enzymes which are right these are the enzymes which are used in genetic engineering now with the help of these enzymes we have formed the fragments now we need to separate that fragments and the electrophoresis will be used for this so for studying this electro so now there will be a break after the break we will continue this okay so you people have dinner break right dinner break so we'll meet at 8 35 okay so bye bye tara take care yes harini it's not tomorrow it's today today or tomorrow afternoon till 12 pm you can enroll in the neat end game batch right and guys there is a link in the description box i hope you can see that see you can go to the description box there is a link for this neat end game you have to click on this link right you have to click on this link right details are there okay and accordingly you, you have to pay the fee and you will be the part of our batch okay so as of now we are studying the structural organization in animal we are about to finish it okay you have to add all that details and all okay so uh, yeah we are studying structural organization in animals and uh, from monday i'm going to start the human physiology so if you are thinking right right if you are thinking to uh, be the part of this batch i think you should take this batch today itself because tomorrow the last class of structural organization is there and then there will be the uh, human physiology okay and you know that it is the most important unit of uh, for your knee 2024 
हाई स्टूडेंट सो लेट्स कंटिन्यू द क्लास बच्चे सी क्विकली लेट्स रिवाइज क्विकली वॉट वी हैव कवर्ड so far so you know that we started with the isolation of dna and we know that for that we need the lysing enzymes the cleaving enzymes right bachche we need the lysing enzymes we need the cleaving enzymes and then i told you about the dna ligase alkaline phosphatase as well about the sticky ends and about the blunt ends as well now let's talk about the electrophoresis why is it so in the why are we talking about the electrophoresis it's very simple let's start with the steps so firstly what i just said that we need to isolate the dna we have to we have to cut the dna into fragments by restriction endonucleases and then we need to isolate the desired dna fragment theek hai so how can we how can we how can we isolate our desired dna fragment there should be a way right there should be a way to do that yes or no there should be a way to do that so that is what we are going to do by electrophoresis so in electrophoresis what is going to happen bachche under the influence of electricity the charged particles on the basis of their size they will get separated what is going to happen in the electrophoresis in electrophoresis yes in electrophoresis what is going to happen people please revert and stop chit chatting here otherwise i'll end the class okay so all of you please pay attention here so in electrophoresis what is going to happen the charged particles the charged particles will get separated on the basis of right the charged particle will get separated on the basis of their size this point is very important right bachche this point is very important on the basis of their size and again i'm repeating the charged particle will get separated on the basis of their size under the influence of electricity this is going to happen in the right this is going to happen in the gel electrophoresis people right under the influence of electricity the charged particles will get separated but the point here is on the basis of their size bachche like see dna is what dna is a negatively charged molecule what is dna dna is a negatively charged molecule why dna is negatively charged tell me why dna is negatively charged due to the presence of phosphoric acid or you can say that due to the presence of phosphate right so phosphate is going to make it negatively charged so because dna is negatively charged so obviously it will move towards the positive end it will move towards the positive end so here it is the anode that is the positive end clear bachche here it is the anode which is the positive end so in electrophoresis electricity will be applied this charged particle will get separated so when it comes to the electrophoresis you have two ways actually it is the gel electrophoresis which electrophoresis it is it is the gel electrophoresis so here you have page and age this is what we discuss right page and age page and age vijay what is it it is page and age so when it is page page means page means polyacrylamide polyacrylamide gel electrophoresis clear bachche it is polyacrylamide gel electrophoresis and another is age so age is agarose gel electrophoresis age is agarose gel electrophoresis and here this is what we are going to perform agarose gel electrophoresis so what is agarose agarose is a polymer it's a polysaccharide right it is a polymer it is a polysaccharide which is extracted from seaweeds right bachche it is a polymer it is a polysaccharide right which is extracted from seaweeds that is what the agarose is okay so look at the setup bachche wait i'll show you the images and that setup just see this just see this just have a look okay <coughs> what are we talking we are talking about the age age means agarose gel electrophoresis 
what is age it is agarose gel electrophoresis what is age it is agarose gel electrophoresis so just look at this setup here this is what you have right this is what do you uh, this is what do you have so here you are going to make that gel okay you are going to make that gel so what will you do you will mix this agarose in hot water its powder will be taken it will be mixed in hot water and then bache we will allow it to cool okay right it will be mixed in hot water and we are going to allow it to cool so now in this gel what is going to happen bache the filaments right there will be the cross linking of filament and then a gel like form will be there okay we are going to take agarose powder we will mix it in water we will allow it to cool and we will see that that filaments na they are going to form they will be cross linked they will form a gel okay they will form a gel so on the basis of concentration now now see a gel like consistency this is what we are going to get okay the gel like consistency we are going to get this is just to explain you right try to understand that what are we going to get the gel like consistency now in this gel obviously some pores are also present can you see that pores are also present in this gel right pores are also present so the pore size okay the pore size it depends upon pore size it depends upon the concentration of agarose it depends upon the concentration of agarose right bachche it depends upon the concentration of agarose this is what this is what the agarose gel electrophoresis is so here you can see the setup so we will form the gel here here we have the wells right in which we have to load the dna sample what we have to do we have to load the dna sample and from these pores under the influence of electricity on the basis of size the dna fragments will get separated so the keyword here is the size right the keyword here is the size please do not make the mistake there right the keyword here is what the keyword here is the size and that is what you need to focus so so wells are there in which we will take dna sample as i said bachche right that <laughs> it is not that helically coiled dna that will be present there right it is not that helically coiled dna that will be present there of course again you are going to see a kind of liquid so before loading the sample here before loading the sample here we need to because otherwise in the gel we will not be able to see the bands we have to we have to color the dna first we have to stain the dna first and that stain is nothing but it is the etbr ethidium bromide everyone please write down that is ethidium bromide what is the name of that stain the name of that stain is ethidium bromide right the name of that stain is ethidium bromide that is etbr ethidium bromide that is etbr okay okay so before loading the sample we have to stain the dna with the right concentration of the etbr okay so now under the influence of electricity the small fragments right right the small fragments they will move farther the larger fragments they'll be near to that negative end theek hai because the separation is as per the size so so the dna fragment having smaller size they will cover a longer distance right they will move farther okay they will move farther and the dna fragments which are having longer size they will stay near to that positive end only theek hai bachche so on the basis of size it will get separated simple as that and then after that what will be done see look at this part look at this part this is the direction this is the direction of the migration see this is a negative side this is the negative side this is the positive side positive electrode means the anode we are discussing here the dna sample will be loaded so the smaller fragments they will move more closer to the negative end that is this is how you are going to get it right so you will get the bands there okay you will get the bands there and finally we are going to expose this gel to which rays can you tell me we have to expose this gel right we have to expose this gel can you tell me we need to expose this gel to yes we need to expose this gel to yes people tell me we have to expose this gel to exactly to the uv radiation to the ultraviolet radiation and we will see the bands there right we will see the bands there let's say this is your desired dna fragment okay 
लेट से दिस इज योर डिजायर्ड डी एन ए फ्रेगमेंट देन वॉट वी हैव टू डू बच्चे वॉट वी हैव टू डू फ्रॉम दिस जेल वी विल बिकॉज वेन वंस वी विल एक्सपोज इट टू द यू वी रेडिएशन वी विल स्टार्ट सींग दैट बैंड वाई वाई बिकॉज वी हैव ऑलरेडी स्टेन्ड आर डी एन ए दैट डी एन ए विल गिव ब्राइट ऑरेंज कलर्ड बैंड वॉट टाइप ऑफ बैंड यू आर गोइंग टू गेट ब्राइट ऑरेंज कलर्ड बैंड ओके ब्राइट ऑरेंज कलर्ड बैंड इज दैट क्लियर is that clear all right is that clear that will be bright orange colored bands understood right so after exposing it to the uv radiation that type of band will be obtained so now let's say this is your desired dna fragment so we will take it out from the gel we have to cut that gel into the pieces and then from that gel we will take out that dna fragment we are going to take out that dna fragment and that is known as illusion that is known as illusion clear bachche that is known as illusion that is how you separate your desired dna fragment have a look okay have a look so this is the separation and isolation of dna fragment so what are we going to do the cutting of dna by restriction endonucleases it will results in the fragments of dna so these fragments can be separated by a technique known as gel electrophoresis right how can we separate these fragments with a with the help of gel electrophoresis uh, so because dna is negatively charged we will separate them by forcing them to move towards the anode why because this anode is because this anode is positively charged because this anode is positively charged clear bachche clear bachche so most commonly used matrix is agarose which is a natural polymer extracted from seaweeds extracted from seaweeds so that's your homework right in the comment section this is what you are going to mention that from which seaweeds we can extract the agarose what exactly is the agarose okay that's your homework understood so dna fragments they will separate they'll resolve according to their size through the sieving effect provided by the agarose gel basically in that agarose gel pores are there na pores are there so so through that pores that agarose that dna fragment it will move so smaller the fragment size the farther it moves clear the farther it moves so here you can see the smallest bands they'll reach near to the uh, positive side right so anode is positively sized positively charged and cathode is negatively charged okay so separated dna fragments they'll be visualized only after the staining so the stain name is important bachche right 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 and see bright orange colored bands will be obtained this is important that what type of bands we are going to get another important mcq bachche okay so separated bands they are cut out from the agarose gel they'll be extracted from the gel piece this is known as illusion right this is known as illusion so another mcq right this is another mcq so that step clear yes bachche this step clear sure 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 so so that is how you know we will separate the dna fragment now one very important point let's say obviously you are using plasmid okay as of now you do not know about the other vectors you only know about the plasmid and plasmid and bacteriophages they are the most commonly used vectors do you know that plasmids and bacteriophages they are the plasmids and bacteriophages they are the most commonly used right bachche they are the most commonly used vectors okay so so we will perform gel electrophoresis to the plasmid as well to the desired dna as well right let's say if your desired dna is a linear dna okay and you already know that your plasmids dna is the circular dna so tell me how many fragments you are going to get from it how many fragments you people are going to get from that how many bands are you going to get just say let's say you have the plasmid and the desired dna their size is same right their size is same there is no variation in the size so tell me how many bands are you going to get how many bands are you going to get of 
बिकॉज इट सिंपल प्लाज्मेट इज अ सर्क्यूलर डी एन ए प्लाज्मेट इज अ सर्क्यूलर डी एन ए राइट इट इज हैविंग ओनली वन रिस्ट्रिक्शन साइट दिस इज द कंडीशन इफ देर इज ओनली वन रिस्ट्रिक्शन साइट इफ रिस्ट्रिक्शन साइट इज मोर देन वन देन देर विल बी द प्रॉब्लम बट वी आर सेंग देर इज ओनली वन रिस्ट्रिक्शन साइट सो ऑब्वियसली द रिस्ट्रिक्शन इन डू न्यूक्लियज विल मेक द कट हेयर सो वेन इट विल मेक द कट हेयर सो वॉट विल बी देर your circular dna will become like this basically only one fragment there will be only one fragment now when your dna is linear okay now when your dna is linear so in that case when you will try to separate it what will we get we will get two separate fragments so here in the case of plasmid one fragment one band will be obtained and in the case of desired dna if it is a linear dna then you will get two bands okay so gel electrophoresis is performed to both and finally we will get this dna also this dna also and finally you know that we have to make the recombinant plasmid but how can we achieve that first of all so before that we need to talk about the vectors right what we need to discuss we need to talk about the vectors so what are vectors vectors are bachche vector is the vehicle dna it's a gene taxi it's a gene carrier like in the case of disease yes even in the case of disease what do we discuss in the case of disease in the case of disease we know that uh, in the case of disease we know that that let's say let's talk about malaria anopheles mosquito hai na anopheles female anopheles will carry the malarial parasite will transmit that malarial parasite female anopheles is the vector there tell me okay so tell me the vector of uh, which area when crofty tell me the vector of which area when crofty everyone tell me the vector of which area when crofty tell me the vector of which area when crofty culex exactly culex so vectors even in the disease vectors are the one that will separate uh, that will spread the disease that will transmit the disease so here also right when you are talking about these vehicle dna they are the one which we are going to use for transferring our desired dna into the host cell right into the host cell right and these vectors right the most commonly used vectors are plasmid and bacteriophages so one student was asking na that what is the difference in a plasmid and a vector plasmid is just a type of vector and plasmid is the extra chromosomal dna present in the bacteria what is a bacteriophage bacteriophage is a virus that infects the bacteria so it also acts like a it also acts like a yes act like a acts like a vector okay so now the next point is what do you think that any one can be a vector any piece of dna can be a vector like now we need to talk about the features right now we need to talk about what we need to talk about the features of cloning vector what we need to discuss bachche we need to talk about the features of cloning vector yes what we need to discuss we need to talk about the features of cloning vectors right features of cloning vectors this is what we need to discuss so first so what do you think that any piece of dna can start behaving like a any piece of dna can be a vector what do you think any piece of dna can be a vector tell me quickly so obviously there should be there should be certain features right right so the very important thing is origin of replication this is something very important students right this is something very important origin of replication right origin of replication right in the case of in the case of dna replication that's what we have studied that replication cannot start from any point there should be a proper origin there should be a proper place from where it has to start right there should be a proper place from where it has to start and we used to call it as origin of replication right right so origin of replication should be there in a vector vector should be something which can replicate by its own it should not be dependent on others okay it should not be dependent on others are you getting it that's the meaning of origin of replication so vectors should have origin of replication sites right they should be capable of dividing by its own 
it should be capable of dividing by its own understood understood right bache and do you know even this origin of replication see let's say this is a plasmid let's take the example of a plasmid here in this plasmid let's say this point is the origin of replication okay let's consider this point to be the origin of replication site so if we will right if we will link any foreign gene to it right if we will link any foreign gene next to it let's say this is your alien dna the foreign dna so obviously when this plasmid will replicate my alien dna will also replicate right that's how my alien dna will get cloned this is gene cloning as well right so this origin of replication site they control the copy number right they control the this is the line given in ncert na they control the copy number of linked dna the dna which is attached to it it controls the copy lump copy number of that dna right it controls what it controls the copy number of linked dna that's the point that is the point bache now what is the meaning of copy number what is the meaning of copy number okay that point is fine that origin of replication is going to decide the copy number what is the copy number what is the copy number it's very simple like let's say in some cells a particular plasmid is having only four copies in some cells maybe it is having you know uh eight copies like this like this so these number of copies are number of copies are basically what right it means now that how many times this plasmid can divide how many copies right how many copies this plasmid can form right the single plasmid can divide how many times or how many copies it can form in a particular cell so that is the copy number jaise here this plasmid can have four copies in a particular cell its copy number is 4 here its copy number is 8 okay so origin of replication site or i sites they decide the copy number okay they control that copy number okay right they decide the copy number they control that copy number this is what you need to keep in your mind so let's say if you are cloning a piece of gene why are we using these vector i told you as a vehicle as a as a vehicle okay as a taxi so we you are using these vectors for cloning our gene of interest as well we are using these vectors even to transfer our gene of interest into a host right even to transfer our gene of interest into a host that is how we are using a vector that is how we are using a vector am i right so now because what i just said controls the copy number of linked dna it is about the copy number it is about what it is about the copy number right bachche it is about what it is about the copy number so please listen to me carefully so so let's say if for a particular gene if you need its 10 copies so accordingly you will select a vector like this copy number also helps in selecting a vector right this copy number also helps in selecting a vector like when you talk about the vectors na when we differentiate them into different types we we talk about the the uh, we talk about the size of the desired gene and we even talk about the type of host right on what basis you select a vector you you see you check the size of the cloning gene and even you check the type of the host so now let's say if for a particular gene of interest you need its 10 copies okay so accordingly you will select a vector if let's say you need 50 copies accordingly you will select a vector let's say let's say if your gene of interest is in kbs like its size is smaller so accordingly you will say, uh, select a vector and even if its size is very big accordingly then you will select a vector are you getting my point then accordingly you will select a vector so that's how we even select the vectors okay so copy number is also one of the criteria that how many copies you need for that particular gene right how many copies of that particular gene you need okay how many copies of that particular gene you need that is also a point understood understood so this part clear origin of replication the word copy number origin of replication the word copy number second is the restriction site although second is selectable marker but firstly let's talk about the restriction site and remember bachche the origin of replication is the most important thing right origin of replication is the most important thing right so restriction site also known as cloning site also known as recognition site this should be present hai na 
right whatever is the plasmid uh, okay whatever is the that vector whatever vector you have selected at least that vector should have sites that can be recognized by restriction endonuclease otherwise our restriction endonuclease will not be able to make the cut it will be of no use then okay and then we also talk about the selectable markers right that vector should have selectable markers so firstly let's discuss the selectable markers then we'll be talking about the yes then we'll be talking about the recognition site selectable markers this is another important feature that a vector should have the selectable markers right this is the another okay this is the another important feature that a vector should have okay now what is the selectable marker uh, it is something which is making that particular vector unique uh, unique in which sense let me tell you let's say you are again take the example of a plasmid why am i taking the example of a plasmid because for you people it will be easy to understand it will be easy to visualize the plasmid because we have studied the plasmid okay okay we know that it's a circular dna that's why again and again i'm taking the example of a plasmid and plasmid and bache plasmid and the bacteriophage is the most commonly used vector okay it is the plasmid and the bacteriophage which is the most commonly used vector okay it is the most commonly used vector okay so let's say this plasmid of course we know that it will be having the origin of replication hai na let's say this plasmid is having a, some genes which is giving it a unique property unique property as in let's say this particular plasmid right let's say this particular plasmid is having the antibiotic resistance right it is having the antibiotic resistant gene it is having the antibiotic resistant gene isn't it isn't it it is having what it is having the ident uh, antibiotic resistant gene so it let's say it this gene is against the antibiotic a you take the example of any antibiotic you can take the example of tetracycline ampicillin streptomycin canamycin whatever you want to as of now i'm just giving you one example so what are we talking people what are we talking we are talking about the yes leharika vijay tomboy chiku guys quick what are we talking we are talking about the selectable marker what are we talking we are talking about the selectable marker so we are saying that selectable marker is any kind of gene which is giving a kind of special phenotypic effect to that plasmid a special phenotypic property to that plasmid right it is something special by which i can figure out ki okay this is that plasmid this is that plasmid some special property right some 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 phenotypic expression right now how am i going to use that phenotypic expression very simple it is what am i saying here let's say this is having the right this plasmid is having the antibiotic resistance against gene a right again sorry uh, against antibiotic a ba just a minute even screen is not responding now fine okay so let's say it is having the resistance against the antibiotic a okay against the a now how can i use this property again i'm repeating this point whenever we conduct such experiments it's not like that you are holding plasmid like this you are holding a cell like this and you are putting the cell no no again you are mixing two solution again you are incubating right you are incubating a fragment where you know that tn is there right like this this is how you are going on ha huh, water in water take your water in water so now let's say this is my host cell i want to check i want to check that whether my host cell is a transformant or not being or simply let's say i am i want to check that whether my host cell has picked up the recombinant plasmid or not okay i'm telling you the function of selectable marker listen to me very carefully i have this plasmid here i have inserted my gene of interest near to the origin of replication site i have studied this plasmid i know this plasmid is having the antibiotic resistance against a ठीक है अगेंस्ट एंटीबायोटिक ए नाउ आई वांट टू ट्रांसफर दिस रिकॉम्बिनेंट प्लाज्मिड इनटू अ होस्ट बट नाउ डू यू थिंक दैट होस्ट विल ऑलवेज पिक अप द डीएनए व्हाट डू यू थिंक लेट्स से दिस इज माय होस्ट सेल दिस इज माय होस्ट सेल आर यू श्योर दैट होस्ट विल ऑलवेज पिक अप द रिकॉम्बिनेंट प्लाज्मिड नो 
it's not mandatory we have to check that right we have to check that so if our host has picked up if our host has picked up recombinant plasmid if our host has picked up recombinant plasmid if it has picked up recombinant plasmid yes bachche again i'm repeating if it has picked up recombinant plasmid then it is a transformant what is the meaning of being a transformant it is transformed it is transformed why because this host cell initially let's say it doesn't have initially let's say it doesn't have the resistance against the antibiotic a but now if it has picked up my plasmid it will no doubt it will get my foreign gene but along with that foreign gene in that plasmid as i said it is having the resistance now against antibiotic a so it has acquired a special phenotypic effect it has acquired a new phenotypic effect so that is why we say it is what that is why we say it is what it is a transformant that is why we say it is what it is a transformant because it is transformed it has acquired a new phenotypic character that's the point here okay okay so host has picked up the recombinant plasmid right so if it it is a transformant and if not then it is what it is a non transformant okay if not then it is a non transformant then what is it it is a non transformant clear bachche क्लियर बच्चे ओके ओके डन सो नाउ हाउ दैट सेलेक्टेबल मार्कर विल हेल्प सी नाउ लेट्स से आई वांट टू चेक वेदर माय सेल हैज पिक्ड इट अप और नॉट इनिशियली आई एक्सप्लेन यू द मीनिंग ऑफ ट्रांसफॉर्मेंट एंड नॉन ट्रांसफॉर्मेंट सो इफ आई वांट टू चेक राइट लेट्स से सो व्हाट विल आई डू आई विल ग्रो माय होस्ट सेल इन द कल्चर i'll take two culture i'll take a culture right in this culture medium i am going to add antibiotic a what will i do in this culture medium i will add antibiotic a what will i do vijay what will i do i will add antibiotic a if bachche if that cells if they have picked up right if they have picked up the plasmid they will survive if they have picked up my recombinant plasmid they will survive why because this recombinant plasmid will give it the property to stay protected from antibiotic a right this plasmid is having antibiotic resistant gene a so obviously in that case here the cells will survive and if they will not survive if they will die it means then they are non transformant so that's how the selectable marker will help that's how the selectable marker will tell us right that the, that is how the selectable marker will tell us that whether a cell is transformant or not whether host cell has picked up the dna or not that is the point here understood nandini that is the point here right yes even in the identification of the transformant and obviously in the non elimination of the non transformant excellent leharika okay okay that's the role of selectable marker so it can be any it can give it any special phenotypic effect it can be antibiotic resistant it can be resistant to any particular pest it can be anything but we in general pick up this antibiotic resistant point right so selectable marker helps us to figure out which one is transformant which one is not right which one is transformant which one is not jaise you go to the school right you have a proper uniform right right every school is having their uniform so because of that uniform we can figure out okay that kid belongs to this school that kid belongs to that school it's like that okay it's like that okay jaise in the case of e coli you know in the case of e coli it's cat ki it's cat ke in the case i'll take the example of e coli like escherichia coli it doesn't have right this is what we have studied that it doesn't have it doesn't have resistant against it doesn't have resistant against cat k do you know what is that cat k do you know what is that cat k e coli doesn't have resistance against cat k what is this cat k c stands for chlorem phenicol 
ए स्टैंड फॉर एम्पीसिलिन दैट्स कैट के टी स्टैंड फॉर अरे टेट्रासाइक्लिन एंड के स्टैंड फॉर कैनामाइसिन K stands for keramycin. Okay, so what do we have? What do we have? So it's cat K, right? Chloramphenicol. What is it? It is cat K. So chloramphenicol, ampicillin, tetracycline, keramycin. Chloramphenicol, ampicillin, tetra, uh, tetracycline, keramycin. So in the case of E. coli, this is what we know that E. coli doesn't have resistance against. it doesn't have resistant a uh, resistance against these antibiotics so if let's say in genetic engineering if i'm using the e coli if i want to check whether e coli is transformed or not so i should pick up these antibiotics i should pick up the the plasmids that are having antibiotic resistance against these particular antibiotics that can clearly tell us just for an example let's say if your e coli is non transformant if it is non transformant so obviously let's say in this culture i have added kenamycin i have added kenamycin so if your e coli is non transformant do you think it will survive yes vijay do you think it will survive no it will not they all will die and if it will be a transformant and i have used the plasmid that is having resistance against kenamycin it will survive so that's the beauty of the selectable markers right that's the beauty of the selectable markers clear bachche so this cat k is important right this cat k is important understood understood and next is the recognition sites or the restriction sites okay next is the restriction site cloning site or recognition site okay this is what we have so i told you now that in that piece of dna in that plasmid there should be some sites that can be identified by the restriction enzymes okay there should be sites that can be identified by the restriction sites that are known as restriction site cloning site or the recognition site because if they don't have the site then where will that restriction endonuclease will make the cut where will that restriction endonuclease make cut okay so restriction site or the recombination site or the restriction sites they should be there okay they should be there understood right understood so ideally bachche see ideally one restriction site should be there it's good to have it's good to have one restriction site why if there will be only one restriction site na you won't get many fragments right let's say if in a plasmid there are more than more than one restriction site so obviously bachche let's say if in your sol if if your enzyme uh, uh, if whatever solution you are using if it is having more than one restriction enzyme then it can result in formation of many fragments so ideally it is preferred that plasmid should have one restriction site okay it will result in having only one fragment otherwise so many fragments form right otherwise what happened bachche so many fragments they form right so many fragments they form just i'll give you one example i'll i'll basically give you one example example of pbr322 right this is very important you need to remember this this is kind of synthesized artificially synthesized plasmid it is what is it tell me pbr322 p for plasmid and br is telling us about the name of discoverer the bolivo this is rodriguez theek hai so this is the plasmid that you have right definitely you will get question on the basis of this pbr322 okay for sure trust me for sure you are going to get a, a question on the basis of this pbr322 right pbr322 look at this plasmid it is having it is having many restriction sites it is having restriction sites for pst1 pvu1 eco r1 cle1 hind3 bamh1 cell1 pbu2 right so you should know about this right in the neat in the final neat paper this is what you can get right they can you know add the blanks here what is a what is b what is c or what is e so you should know about it just say here or r i you know that it is origin of replication 
it is origin of replication what is this rop this rop is this region is going to form the protein for replication of plasmid protein for replication of plasmid so students if you will not get if rop is not present then protein for replication of plasmid will not form protein for replication of plasmid will not form isn't it protein for replication of plasmid will not form clear look at this these are the two selectable markers which are present this is amtr means ampicillin amtr means ampicillin resistance hai na it means ampicillin resistance and this tetr means tetracycline resistance right resistance against tetracycline okay resistance against tetracycline so you really need to know about the details of this particular vector just look at it right it is having recognition sites for the recognition of how many enzymes 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 isn't it see 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 so eight 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 recognition sites for eight restriction enzymes isn't it now see when you look at this rop this rop is having it is also having the recognition site for pbu2 this tetracycline resistance gene is having in its sequence it is having the restriction site for this bmh1 right this ampicillin resistant gene it is also having the restriction enzyme that can be identified by pst1 and pbu1 so you should know about these details right you should know about these details right bachche you should know about these details theek hai each so what is your homework in the comment section you have to if you are a serious neat aspirant right if you are actually interested in getting 360 out of 360 right if you are a serious neat aspirant and you are actually looking to score 360 out of 360 in biology then please do it right please do it in the comment section you have to tell me that out of the following which enzymes are uh, uh, which enzymes are forming sticky ends which enzymes are forming blunt ends okay which enzymes are forming sticky ends which enzymes are forming blunt ends that's what you need to tell me okay that's what you need to tell me okay so i'll give and one more thing is that see uh i'll ask you one question बच्चे दिस इज योर पी बी आर थ्री टू टू ओके दिस इज द जीन फाइन दिस इज द जीन फॉर एम पी सिलन रेजिस्टेंस एम आई राइट दिस इज योर पी बी आर थ्री टू टू एंड दिस इज द जीन फॉर एम पी सिलन रेजिस्टेंस वॉट एग्जैक्टली इज अ जीन दैट जीन इज जस्ट अ सीक्वेंस ऑफ बेसिस ना दैट जीन इज जस्ट अ सीक्वेंस ऑफ बेसिस हियर देर विल बी सम सीक्वेंसिस there will be some sequences yes or no there will be some sequences here now let's say in that sequences jaise gene is what the basis gene is present on the dna basic unit of inheritance it is so what what that gene is containing obviously these nucleotides right or these nitrogenous bases they are present there now what's my point i am saying that within this gene there is a site that can be recognized by bam h1 there is a site that can be recognized by bam h1 yes bachche md that can be recognized by the restriction enzyme bam h1 now let's say in my genetic engineering procedure i am actually using this i am actually using this restriction enzyme in my genetic engineering procedure i am actually using this restriction enzyme okay so if i will use this restriction enzyme right and let's say here it is having its right here it is having its sequence so don't you think that if i will use this enzyme right it is going to make the cut here it is going to make the cut here nandini right if it is and you know that the same restriction enzyme we will use for the host dna so basically my gene of interest i have to insert my gene of interest here 
if BAMH1 is the restriction enzyme that I'm using and if it is making the cut here in this ampicillin resistant gene within this ampicillin resistant gene so obviously here I am going to insert here I'm going to insert my gene of interest here I'm going to insert my gene of interest here I'm going to insert my gene of interest so if I will insert my gene of interest here do you still think that this plasmid will have resistance against ampicillin do you still think it will have resistance against ampicillin tell me do you think that it will have resistance against ampicillin yes okay my bad here it is not ampicillin it is tetracycline it is tetracycline by mistake i read the ampicillin it's tetracycline okay it's tetracycline because i'm taking the example of bamh1 okay so it's still it will be having the resistance against tetracycline no 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 why because i have interrupted this gene sequence I have interrupted this gene sequence. Now this gene is not going to give me that particular protein because I have break that sequence. I have inserted another gene there in that sequence. Right. So because of the insertion of foreign gene, my tetracycline resistant gene will become inactivated. So this is known as insertional inactivation. This is known as insertional inactivation. But what is it? it is known as insertional inactivation you inserted something that inactivated something right you inserted something that inactivated something okay so if i'll be using bamh1 so it will be sure that my plasmid will lose the resistance against tetracycline so now on the basis of that can i check transformant or non-transformant let's say if in my culture right now again i want to check transformant and non-transformant so if in my culture i have added uh, yes i have added the tetracycline if uh, sorry if i'll add ampicillin even if it is a transformant right if i will add ampicillin what do you think what do you think these cells will survive or not if in my culture i have added ampicillin what do you think the cells will survive or not the cells will survive or not the cells will survive or not of course cells will survive because the plasmid is still having resistance against ampicillin okay now let's say along with ampicillin if i will add tetracycline so who's going to survive there right who's going to survive there if along with ampicillin if i'll add tetracycline then who's going to survive there only non-transformants only non-transformant excellent akhankhya vache excellent only non-transformant will survive right if it will be a transformant it will die it will die so that is how by using you know selectable markers we we try to recognize the transformants from the non-transformants the transformants from the non-transformant and important information bache again i'm telling you there are few days left for joining the neat end game batch here you can see in the description box there is a link you need to click on that link you need to add your email or your mobile number then there are the certain steps that you have to follow and then bache after paying the fees you will be the part of our batch okay so in that batch proper revision is going on if let's say you will join any batch later any batch even after five days even after a week even after 10 days then again there will be a pressure you will not be able to cover your syllabus on time so that's the advice join the batch now still you have time even if you are thinking to join it after a week or after a two it will be of no use again you will have backlogs okay okay again you will have backlog so here you can see this is the batch right the coupon code ambika 10 is already applied okay so you will get this batch at a price of 7599 where proper test and the revision will be there okay Chal. so now come back so insertional inactivation clear now don't you think it is something very uh, you know it's a very tedious task that 
again and again we have to make the cultures we have to set the plates where we are adding antibiotic then we are screening transformant then we are screening non transformant do you don't you think that again and again again and again again and again if we are using the antibiotic resistant genes as selectable markers we have to put a lot of efforts don't you think so we have to put a lot of efforts right so we have another way out also jaise let's say i'll give you the example of beta galacto sidases right i'll give you the example of this enzyme you know that in the lac operon the lac z gene it it encodes this enzyme right the lac z gene do you remember lac z gene it encodes that an enzyme it encodes that enzyme hai na the lac z gene it encodes that particular enzyme beta galactosidase and this beta galactosidase it acts on a chromogenic substrate right it acts on a chromogenic substrate what is the meaning of chromogenic substrate yes what is the meaning of chromogenic substrate chromogenic means color producing means color producing chromogenic means color producing basically these enzymes when they act on color producing substrates they are going to give you the color right you know na there are enzymes enzymes why do they act on substrate because they want to convert that substrate into the product why enzymes they act on the uh, why enzymes they act on the substrate they act on the substrate to convert that substrate into the product right to convert that substrate into the product so if it is a chromogenic substrate color producing substrate so it will convert that substrate into the product of course of course so if i will use such type of selectable markers where i can use enzyme and that enzymes act on color producing substrate so like beta galactosidase its substrate is color producing if beta galactosidase if it is active so it will give blue color the bacterial colonies will give blue color the bacterial colonies will give blue color right bacterial colonies they are going to give which color they are going to give blue color if the beta galactosidase enzyme is present right bache right now let's say i have used this uh, i have used this beta galactosidase as a selectable marker now within this gene yes we have recognition sites if that recognition sites will be recognized by the enzyme obviously you will insert your gene of interest here then it will result in inactivation of beta galactosidase vijay it will it will result in inactivation of beta galactosidase and if beta galactosidase if it will get inactivated the blue color colonies will not be there so by using such enzymes which act on chromogenic substrate it it is comparatively easy it is comparatively better to use such selectable markers right it is comparatively easy and better to use such selectable markers because such selectable markers will simply give us the colored or the non colored or you can say that white colored colonies right we do not have to arrange different different cultures with different different antibiotics right like this like this so this is the beauty of your cloning sites or of your selectable markers so that is what you need to remember you should know about the insertional inactivation as well right and the, uh, yeah you should know about the insertional inactivation as well so this is about the vectors and now we will be discussing the vectors for the plants and the animals okay so up to this part if there is any doubt do let me know do let me know if you have any doubt done any doubt nope so can we continue no ma'am see uh, right now you are not taking these chapters seriously you are thinking that theek hai later on you will join the chapters are not later on you will study you will revise the chapters are not so difficult this and that but trust me biology right biology is very easy but still it's not easy to score 360 out of 360 because in biology if you don't practice if you don't revise no doubt you are going to see our question is very easy 
right but still you know four options are there it's right it's a objective paper na four options are there so if you do not revise it properly you do not practice properly then what is going to happen you will get confused in two options right you are going to be confused in two options okay and biology is something where you can save a lot of time for physics for chemistry if you know see in biology there are two scenarios either you know the answer or you don't know the answer either you know the answer or you don't know the answer if you know the answer right if you know the answer you will immediately mark it and then you will move to the next question there is no calculation it's purely your memory based okay so if you are good in biology if you are good at biology if you revise it properly if you practice the questions properly you can finish that 90 questions within 35 to 40 minutes and then you can save that time for the then you can save that time for the physics as well as for the chemistry but if you will not take biology seriously if you will not uh, make it a stronger part then what is going to happen you have to spend a lot of time in figuring out the right answer hai na and then obviously you will have less time for the physics and chemistry so kindly pay attention kindly pay attention i i know that molecular basis of inheritance chapter and there are some chapters of uh, human physiology now now uh, from that uh, neural control and coordination eye and ear is deleted so that chapter is also very difficult to complete in one go if you don't have proper revision na then it is very difficult to complete that chapter in one go so that's why in such chapters we are going to give you part 1 part 2 types but but still right in that 75 days challenge series na you can still cover your syllabus you can still cover everything but later on later on right only one shots will be there where we are going to focus on the most important topics we are not going to cover everything there we do not have the time okay so please utilize that time kindly utilize that time be sincere please be sincere fine and if you are not then please do not waste time here in just chit chatting at least not here i feel bad okay you can chit chat there are other platforms there are many you know live sessions of news okay or of of, of that music videos right they you can go there you can chit chat there that is the best platform no one is going to disturb you go there utilize your time there i'm telling you that but not here please chalo so see cloning vector as i said plasmid and bacteriophages they have ability to replicate within bacterial cells independent of the control of chromosomal dna that's something very beautiful about the cloning vectors okay right and then bacteriophages because of their high number per cell they have very high copy numbers of their genome within the bacterial cells right so bacteriophages they have high number per cell means their copy number is more in comparison to plasmid as well okay so some plasmids they have only one or two copies per cell others they have 15 to 100 right so if we are able to link an alien piece of dna with bacteriophage or plasmid we can multiply its number equal to the copy number of plasmid right so vectors that are used at present are engineered in such a way that they help easy linking of foreign dna and selection of recombinants from non recombinants so here you can see the features origin of application completed here see it is uh, written that any piece of dna when linked to the sequence it can be made to replicate within host cell so this sequence is responsible for controlling the copy number of the linked dna then then comes the selectable marker so in selectable marker in addition to origin of replication vectors require a selectable marker which will help in identifying and eliminating non transformant and permitting the growth of transformants so transformation is what it is the procedure by which it is the procedure by which right bachche what is going to happen by which the host cell can accept the genetic material from the surrounding right host cell can accept can accept the genetic material from the surrounding clear bache clear bache so genes encoding resistant to antibiotics such as ampicillin chloramphenicol tetracycline or kanamycin i gave you the trick for that that for e coli they can act as a selectable marker so for e coli the trick is cat k the trick is cat k okay it is cat k fine so next is pbr32 rudan so 
here you can see about the cloning sites so yes the recognition sites and the cloning sites they are important right they are important so presence of more than one recognition sites within the vector will generate several fragments right so that can complicate the gene cloning so obviously one restriction site is preferred okay one restriction site is preferred understood so do revise it okay do revise it and here you can see the example of beta galactosidase as well so important it is fine important it is done bache so there are different types of vectors do you know them there are different types of vectors i told you about the plasmids i told you about the bacteriophages there are other things also let's discuss that right so as i said on the basis of size right on the basis of size and the type of host also we select the vector jaise let's say plasmid you know about the plasmid right you know about the plasmid right so obviously different different plasmids are there we have the example of pbr322 do not forget that pbr322 please mention it thank you tom boy bache my energy is not related to my food as of now so please focus here so another is puc18 these are the examples of the plasmid then bache we have bacteriophages also right what do we have we have bacteriophages also can you give me the example of that lambda phage is there hai na there are different type of bacteriophages that are used as vectors so we have lambda phage lambda bacteriophage we have m13 bacteriophage as well right we have lambda bacteriophage and we have m13 bacteriophage as well so on what basis we are going to decide the plasmid uh, the vector obviously on the basis of the size jaise in the case of plasmids right let's say if the insert is having a size of 0.5 kb somewhere in between right if if the gene of interest is having a size somewhere in between 0.5 kb to 8 kb right then we will go for the plasmids let's say if it is having a size in between 9 kb to 23 kb then we will go for bacteriophages jaise do you remember the example from a molecular basis of inheritance bac yac right they are used in human genome project right they are used in human genome project bacterial artificial chromosome yeast artificial chromosome yes bacterial artificial chromosome or yeast artificial chromosome bacterial artificial chromosome or yeast artificial chromosome if you remember they are used in hgp in human genome project why because they can they can clone the gene of large size right jaise let's say yac can clone the gene having uh, somewhere in between 1000 to 2500 kb so on the basis of type of host and the basis of size we select the vectors okay we select the vectors clear bachche yes clear bachche sure right so now your homework is this is also your homework in the chat section you will tell me about the phage mids you will tell me about the cosmids that is your homework fine that is your homework so what do you think they are the only vectors of course not we have other vectors also theek okay? hai we have other vectors also for the plants as well as for the animals so bachche first of all write down there is something called shuttle vectors okay there is something called shuttle vectors right shuttle vectors are the one that can be used for both right shuttle vectors so chitra shuttle vectors are the one that can be used for both used for both means that can be used for the prokaryotic as well as eukaryotic cell shuttle vectors they are the vectors that can be used for both prokaryotic as well as eukaryotic cell right as well as eukaryotic cell like there are sir, some vectors i told you not the type of host will also decide that what type of vector should be there 
right the type of host will also decide uh, as per the type of host we will also select the vector so shuttle vectors are the one that can be used for both prokaryotes as well as for the eukaryotic cell so it is ti plasmid right it is the ti plasmid it is the example here ti plasmid is nothing ti means tumor inducing ti means tumor inducing plasmid okay it means tumor inducing plasmid got it right shuttle vectors so now what in the ncrt it is given now the vectors for the plants for the element uh, animals so we are going to talk about this particular vector we are going to talk about a bacterium first that is agrobacterium tumefacens do you know about this bacteria yes do you know about this bacteria agrobacterium tumefacens yes do you know about this bacteria agrobacterium tumefacens facens anyone anyone but it's a natural engineer this bacteria is also referred as natural engineer okay it's a soil born bacteria it's a soil born bacteria now this bacteria what this bacteria can do right what this bacteria can do look at this agrobacterium tumefaces a natural engineer soil born bacteria this bacteria it used to infect dicot plants right it infect dicot plants and because of that because of that these normal cells of the plant they will become uh, cancerous basically they will form tumor right because of this bacteria in the dicot right they will form tumor the crown gall tumor might be you know about it right tumor causing in the dicots you are right okay tumor causing in the dicots but how how can they how can they do it simple it is let's say this is the bacteria scientists they studied the structure of this bacteria and they observed that this bacteria is having a plasmid this bacteria is having a plasmid and that plasmid right that plasmid is having the tdna okay this bacteria it is having a plasmid and that plasmid is having a tdna right tdna means in that plasmid there is a sequence niharika in that plasmid there is a sequence which is tdna that can that causes yes bachche that causes tumor to dicot plants that is responsible for transfer right that is responsible for transforming a normal cell into the cancerous one and into the tumor cell right into the tumor cell okay the tdna so that's why this plasmid is known as ti plasmid i gave you the example here na right i gave you the example here na that's why it is known as ti plasmid tumor inducing plasmid what is it it is the tumor inducing plasmid right so what this bacteria used to do bachche this bacteria this bacteria it transfers its tdna into the normal plant cell what this bacteria is going to do it, it is its natural ability okay it is the natural ability of this bacteria that it will use it will use its tdna it will use its tdna and it will it will transfer its tdna to the normal cell and it will convert that normal cell into the tumor cell right it will convert that normal cell into the tumor cell clear this is the natural ability of this bacteria now you know that we humans are very selfish so we are like here yaar this bacteria is doing a very good job hai na naturally it is capable of transferring and uh, transforming a normal cell into the tumor one so let's use utilize it in a better way let's say let's say let's say uh, uh, like teachers what they used to do right uh, that in a class if a, if a student is having that thing na if their student is having that aura that all of all the other students if they are scared of him so my teacher right my science teacher what she used to do she used to make him the class monitor ki you are going to control the class right you are going to control the class okay you should be the class monitor because you are good in it 
बट यू आर यूजिंग योर एनर्जी इन अ डिफरेंट वे इन अ वर्स्ट वे है ना यू हैव दैट लीडरशिप टाइप ऑफ क्वालिटी बट यू 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 नो हाउ टू कंट्रोल पीपल बट बट यू आर नॉट using that trait in a better way na so you should be the class monitor you have to maintain the decorum in the class hai na so my science teachers she used to do it my school teacher and it was the best way because now that particular student is not going to disturb all theek hai same is the case here so scientists they are like acha yaar this cell is very nice hai na it can introduce its tdna into a nor into the plant so let's utilize this property in a good way so they studied this ti plasmid and they got to know that within this tdna within this tdna there are the recognition sites there are the cloning sites they found some cloning sites in this tdna of course now what will they do they will use that particular restriction endonuclease they will use that particular restriction endonuclease they will make the cuts here in tdna they will introduce there right they will introduce their gene of interest in that tdna right and then now this tdna which was initially causing the tumor now it will just transfer our gene of interest there right our gene of interest there theek hai theek hai so that is how we can use this ti plasmid okay same for the retroviruses we will discuss it in biotechnology applications also right retroviruses you know now what are retroviruses do you know what are retroviruses yes anyone retroviruses where rna the viruses in which rna is the genetic material right the viruses in which rna is the genetic material where rna is the genetic material right 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 retroviruses now you know that these viruses they can transform they can also transform normal cell into the cancerous one hai na normal cell into the cancerous one then again what will we do we will disarm harmful genes hai na we will remove that harmful genes and instead of that the gene of interest the useful genes they will be inserted so virus will do its natural thing that virus will go virus will try to insert its genetic material there in that host cell but now instead of that pathogenic genes it will introduce our desired gene it will introduce our desired gene that's the point right that's how these vectors will also be used so any doubt any doubt yes any doubt done so that is how the gene cloning and the gene transfer will be done this is a vector based transfer right when we use vectors to transfer our gene of interest we can use these vectors we have vectorless gene of transfer as well, gene transfer as well that we will discuss okay that we will discuss so now i would like to ask you one question theek okay? hai uh okay i have two questions basically firstly let's move to this pbr322 now bache here i am using this plasmid and i am using this restriction enzyme you tell me what is going to happen you please tell me what is going to happen quick i am using this plasmid and i am using pvu2 what is going to happen tell me tell me tell me the proper answer i need a proper answer quick i need a proper answer quick bache we need one and half hour more and the chapter will be over so please be quick there will be no rop protein so no rop protein means saba no rop protein means you are just looking at the diagram and you are telling me no rop but what is the meaning here
हाँ जी क्विक बच्चे इट्स वेरी सिंपल ना इफ वी विल यूज सो सच टाइप ऑफ क्वेश्चन कैन कम इन योर पेपर दे केन कम इन योर नीट ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी for paper of course so what is going to happen here it's very simple pbu2 if we will use this restriction enzyme this rop will be uh, interrupted means the proteins for the replication of plasmid will not form if no if you know a lot about this chapter now open this thing steps for recombinant dna technology steps for recombinant dna technology so the point is isolation of dna first thing now you know how can we isolate the dna everyone i want the answers in the chat section but i really need your one and half hour more and the chapter will be over okay the chapter will be over okay so please be quick and we can even finish it in one one hour 15 minutes if you will support me right now see we what we need to discuss we need to talk about the competent host very easy we know we, we need to talk about the pcr ha huh, pcr competent i just need your 50 minutes theek hai i just need your 50 minutes so for next 50 minutes you have to be attentive what say people for next 50 minutes you have to be attentive theek hai yes in 50 minutes the chapter will be over chalo so simple it is the first thing is isolation of dna we have to isolate the dna now my students they know the name of the enzymes they know everything right they know the name of the enzymes they know everything here second is fragmentation of dna by restriction endonucleases you know that we'll use restriction endonucleases we will have the fragments we will use that fragments we will use that fragments right firstly we need to separate that fragments so isolation of desired dna fragment gel electrophoresis done gel electrophoresis is done ligation of desired dna fragment into vector that we have to discuss but you know how to figure out the transformations right you know how to select the transformants now here i am going to ask you one question on the basis of these steps i am going to ask you one question the first thing is isolation of dna do you think that if we are trying to get the dna right if we are trying to get the dna then uh, do you think in a cell only dna is present that you can easily get the dna only han ji what do you think what do you think do you think that it's very easy to directly get the dna it's very easy to directly get the dna do you think so do you think so ha huh? do you think so no why 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 is it so it's very simple even if you are talking about a eukaryotic cell you know that the other proteins are there the his, the rnas are there so many things are there so bachche for get for genetic engineering we need the dna only right we need the dna only so we have to give the appropriate treatment because we need the purified dna so we are going to use the enzymes jaise we will be using the proteases let's say here in this test tube you know that you have a cell right no doubt you will treat it with the cleaving uh, you will treat it with the lysing enzymes then you will treat it with the proteases why with the proteases because these proteases they will digest proteins jaise let's say if you are talking about the eukaryotic cell histone proteins will be there histone proteins will be there they will be digested by these proteases now we will use rnas also what are rnas they will digest ribonucleic these are ribonucleases they will digest rnas hai na and for other things also we will use proper treatment we will use proper treatment why because we want our dna to be in the purified form right for the isolation of dna all that steps are important right for the isolation of dna all that steps are important we have to use the enzymes to break the cell walls we have to use the enzymes to digest the proteins to digest the rnas other appropriate treatments will be taken so that we can only get the dna now let's say in test tube in this test tube we are doing all that activity so finally finally how can i get my purified dna let's say firstly i treated it with proteases i treated it with rnases then i will add the chilled ethanol there and that chilled ethanol what that chilled ethanol will do tell me what that chilled ethanol will do anyone in the class what that chilled ethanol will do right right it will do the precipitation of purified dna 
right when i will add the chilled ethanol it will result in the precipitation of purified dna there right the precipitates will form a kind of suspension will be there right priya this kind of suspension will be there right right a kind of such kind of structure the thread like things will form now what i have to do niharika i will add a glass rod there just say let's say let's say this imagine it as a test tube in this test tube i know my dna threads are present i will use a glass rod like this i will rotate that glass rod like this so that i can get the threads the suspension of that dna this is spooling this is spooling what is it it is spooling what is it it is spooling that's how you isolate your dna you must be thinking that ma'am why are you telling us all that things right because before starting the host you should imagine that process so here you can see that dna is not in the purified form see here some in ncert some paragraphs are mixed there na that's why so see right in majority of organisms dna is the genetic material in order to cut the dna with restriction enzymes we need that dna in pure forms free from other macromolecules theek hai bachche so for that we have to break the cell open to release dna with other macromolecules theek hai we have to treat the bacterial cells and plants with enzymes like lysozyme cellulase chitinase hai na hai na and then after that you know that genes are located on dna they are intertwined with proteins such as histones so we will also use the proteases hai na we will also use the proteases we will also use the ribonucleases okay so other molecules can be removed by appropriate treatment and purified dna ultimately precipitates out after the addition of chilled ethanol another important mcq right so from this chapter each and every line is an is a mcq theek hai ठीक है सो फाइन थ्रेड्स विल बी कलेक्टेड इन द सस्पेंशन राइट यू कैन सी दैट दैट इज हाउ वी आर गोइंग टू कलेक्ट इट दिस इज द स्पूलिंग दिस इज द स्पूलिंग एंड वन स्टूडेंट इज आस्किंग व्हाट इज इल्यूजन बच्चे इल्यूजन इज दैट वेन फ्रॉम दैट जेल फ्रॉम दैट एगरोज जेल राइट फ्रॉम दैट एगरोज जेल यू कट द जेल पीस यू एक्सट्रैक्ट योर डीएनए दैट इज द इल्यूजन दिस इज स्पूलिंग ठीक है दिस इज स्पूलिंग देन यू आर गोइंग टू कट दिस प्योरिफाइड डी एन ए एट अ स्पेसिफिक लोकेशन यू नो हाउ इट वर्क राइट यू नो हाउ इट वर्क इज इंट इट राइट यू नो यू हैव टू यूज द रिस्ट्रिक्शन इन साइंस एंड आफ्टर दैट यू हैव टू सेपरेट योर यू हैव टू सेपरेट योर डी एन ए फ्रेगमेंट्स राइट विद द हेल्प ऑफ जेल इलेक्ट्रोफोरिस नो नाउ एवरीथिंग इज मेकिंग सेंस एवरीथिंग इज मेकिंग सेंस you know about the vectors people you know about the gel electrophoresis now we will be discussing the amplification we are going to discuss the amplification the amplification of gene of interest the amplification of gene of interest what is it it is the amplification of gene of interest it's very simple see it's not mandatory that your genes see you have to clone the genes we are using the vectors as well we are using the vectors for the cloning we are using the vectors even for their transfer hai yeah, na even for their transfer now we know that there is one more technique that is known as pcr pcr stands for polymerase chain reaction it's a chain reaction means it is going to give us the multiple copies right it is going to give us the multiple copies it is pcr so it was invented by carry mules who invented this technique pcr it was invented by carry mules and this technique is used to amplify the dna right this technique it is used to amplify the dna amplify the gene of interest if you need the multiple copies so we can go for pcr as well we can sometimes you know we use the plasmids so that in that particular cell jaise i told you about the plasmid and copy number na jaise let's say in a bacteria you want your gene of interest should have 10 copies accordingly you will select that plasmid that plasmid will replicate in that particular bacteria that will make its 10 copies and 10 times the expression of that gene will also be there that's how it works theek hai that's how it works right so now pcr can also be used to amplify the gene of interest pcr is polymerase chain reaction it was invented by carry mules it was invented by carry mules now you were telling me the year as well right the year was 1983 are you sure about it are you sure about it yes bachche it's right the year was 1983 so it's a chain reaction many copies will be maintained jaise let's say if you are 
taking n cycles of this PCR, you will get 2n copies, right? So billion of copies we can get in a very less time. So here in this PCR, there are three steps. And what is the trick for that three steps? That is die. What is the trick for that three steps? That is die. Die. This, this is not D-I-E wala die. This is D-A-E wala die. What is it? It's die. D-A-E. So D stands for denaturation. A stands for annealing. D stands for denaturation. A stands for annealing. E stands for extension. Yes, Bachi. What do you have? Denaturation, annealing, extension. Denaturation, annealing, extension. Denaturation, annealing, extension. Take it. The three steps are there. Denaturation, annealing, extension. So that should be the order of these steps. Take it. That should be the order of these steps. Denaturation, annealing, and extension. Very simple it is. See, you should have a piece of DNA for the PCR. Even if it is in very less quantity, it will work. But you should have the piece of DNA. So you know that this DNA itself is having the information. Right? This DNA itself is having the information. Right? It, has, it can act as the template. So how can we use it as a template? We have to break the hydrogen bonds there. And for that hydrogen bond, uh, for the breaking of that hydrogen bond, basically we have to denature the DNA. So that's why the first step is there, which is denaturation. And why that denaturation will be there? Because the temperature for this step is above 90 degree Celsius. Above 90 degree Celsius. Right? And you, do you know where that PCR will occur in the append of tube right in the append of tube pcr reaction will occur okay and obviously you know about the react uh, requirements we need magnesium ions yes do we need uh, deoxyribonucleoside triphosphates yes do we need the enzymes yes right right so for this particular step that is denaturation you know that this is a very important question it was even there in e 2023 so please pay attention. So for denaturation, we have to keep the temperature above 94, uh, 90 degrees Celsius. So it is somewhere in between 94 to 96 degrees Celsius. Okay. It is somewhere in between 94 to 96 degrees Celsius. That is denaturation. So because of high temperature, the bonds will break and his, the double stranded DNA, it will break into the single, single strand. Right. And you know that these single strands, they act like a template. How are they going to act like? They are going to act like a template. This is the first step. Now, what is the next step, Bache? What is the next step, Bache, after this denaturation? The next step is the annealing. The next step is the annealing. Annealing means joining. Here, we need to lower down the temperature. Here, the temperature is somewhere in between the range 40 degrees Celsius to 65 degrees Celsius. Okay, the temperature is low. Why? Because here in this step, we are going to join join what we are going to join the primers we are going to join let's say this strand is 5 prime to 3 prime this strand is 5 prime to 3 prime right so you know that right related with the dna replication in vitro we have to we have to join the primer here we have to join the primer here so for joining the primer we need to form the bonds here right and for bond formation in the high temperature bonds will not form so that's why the temperature for this particular step is low right the temperature for this particular step is low this is the annealing and the primers will be joined so now in the body how that primers will form now in the for body how that primers will form people be quick now in the body how that primers will form hanji niharika tomboy how that primers will form in the body how that primers will form in the body? Anyone with the help of what? With the help of excellent summaria, with the help of primase enzyme, with the help of DNA dependent RNA polymerase, am I right? With the help of DNA dependent RNA polymerase, right? With the help of DNA dependent RNA polymerase, the primers will form. But here, right, we will use artificially a synthesized primers Jesse we know the particular right basically for PCR now the DNA fragment that we used to amplify we know that sequence we know everything about it so now what we uh, what we have to do it's very simple right we know the DNA sequences we will use 
complementary synthesized primer right artificially synthesized it is we are not using a proper primase here to form it no and here this is the difference right this is the difference of this uh, dna replication procedure right in vitro and in vivo you know na, how things are working differently so here that primer is not the rna primer in our body that is a rna primer because primase forms it here it is it is the oligonucleotides primer basically it is the primers having deoxyribose sugar right so oligonucleotides primers it is oligonucleotides they are they are basically having the deoxyribose sugar okay this is annealing the joining will be occur there the joining will be there and then the last step is the extension so extension means now we have this thing right we have the strand we have the primer now we have to further add the deoxyribonucleoside triphosphate so we need the enzyme and here bache the enzyme the, the polymerase that is used is tac polymerase so again it is a repeated question here in extension the temperature is near about 72 70 degrees celsius and the enzyme used is tac polymerase why tac polymerase because of its thermostability right because of its thermal stability right you know that thermostability is a very important property of the thermostability is a very important property it's a very important property of the enzyme right right so that polymerase is thermostable right this enzyme t stands for thermos or thermophilus it can be thermos or thermophilus and aq means aquaticus aq means aquaticus actually this thermos aquaticus is, is an archaebacteria bache what is it it is an archaebacteria yes bache what is it it is an archaebacteria archaebacteria means it's a primitive bacteria aesian bacteria which can survive under extreme temperature conditions which can survive in extreme temperature conditions the archaebacteria so from this bacteria we get this tac polymerase because it can withstand high temperature range it can survive even if the temperature is 100 degrees celsius it will not get denatured right it will not get denatured it can survive even if the temperature range is very high even if it is near about 100 degrees celsius that is why we use this enzyme here so it will add the basis right it will help in that elongation so there are two differences that you need to keep in your mind that in pcr the primers are not rna primers right they are chemically synthesized oligonucleotide primers first thing secondly here the dna synthesis is continuous there is no formation of leading and lagging strand here dna synthesis is continuous here right it is continuous here there is no leading lagging strand there is no leading lagging, lagging strand issue here theek hai bachche theek hai so ultimately these three steps will be repeated again and again these three steps will be repeated again and again again and again again and again and it will result in the formation of multiple copies of gene of interest in a very less time that is what pcr is okay that is what pcr is right and we we use it even to detect, detect uh, to detect the pathogens dna in our body right in our body fluids if we want to check if there is any other dna if any pathogenic dna we can use this pcr take a so there are you know uh ha, for in the dna fingerprinting it is having the role right bache. for diagnosing the specific mutations in a particular gene we can use it we can make multiple copies and then we can study that right for the studying the infectious diseases for gene therapy right there are different ways by which we use this pcr okay so you should know about the temperature you should know about the differences so as i said if n number of cycles will be taken for pcr you will get 2n copies how many copies of dna then you will get you will get 2n copies understood so it can be amplified amplified for the many 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 time okay so this is all about the pcr this is all about the pcr okay and then you know that after it we have to we have to yes but what we have to do we need to send the we need to uh, 
now we when we have the recombinant plasmid what we have to do we need to pass this to the competent host now we need to understand about this competent host and now we have to talk about the ways by which we can transfer our gene of interest okay so first of all let's discuss this word that is competent host so tell me what do you know about this what do you know about this competent host dekho competent host theek hai after competent host haan ji bachche what we need to discuss we need to talk about the competent host theek hai after competent host uh, we'll be talking about we'll be talking about the ways to transfer the gene and then simple bioreactor and the downstream processing ठीक है सो बिफोर इलेवन वी विल फिनिश द क्लास व्हाट से बिफोर इलेवन वी विल फिनिश द क्लास सो आर यू एक्साइटेड हाँ जी बिफोर इलेवन वी विल फिनिश द क्लास सो इन दिस चैप्टर मेनली द टेक्निक द डायग्राम्स द सिलेक्टेबल मार्कर्स ओके एंड बेसिकली द कंप्लीट एन सी आर टी इज इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर दिस चैप्टर आई हैव नेवर सीन एनी क्वेश्चन बियॉन्ड एन right i have never seen any question beyond ncrt so practice ncrt again and again now let's see let's say i can see this book it is a kind of ncrt tablet biology so if i look for the biotechnology chapter here let me tell you just give me a minute ha huh. for the biotechnology chapter na so from its each and every line the questions the questions are there jaise that enzyme wala part lysing enzyme that question has been asked in neat 2020 2013 theek hai the child ethanol wala question was there in neat 20, uh, 2019 theek hai in spooling question was there in neat 2020 uh, exonuclease endonuclease jaise exonuclease remove the nucleotides from end endonuclease makes cut at specific position this question was there in neat 2020 right the first discovered restriction endonuclease was hind 2 hind you know na h hemophilus i n influenza i n d is that influenza hind 2 so that has been asked in neat 2020 right so basically each and every line that we have discussed today is important so each restriction endonuclease functions by inspecting the length of dna sequence it will recognize that particular sequence then it will cut the type 2 1 that is also a question so each and every line each and every line is important and do you know that that gatas wala question g a a t t c it has been asked in neat 2020 even in 2022 imagine imagine so it is that important fine so for this chapter i have never seen any question right any extra question always questions are there from the ncrt okay so please after the class read each and every word each and every line of ncrt and press tell me how many questions are you going to practice from this particular chapter how many questions are you going to practice from this particular chapter after the class we'll finish it in within 35 minutes or 40 minutes 200 are you sure trust me if you will practice even the 100 questions na then for sure you are not going to miss big mistake in your final neat paper wow those who are writing zero yaar please don't waste your time go watch some movie or something hmm chalo let's talk about the competent host what is the meaning of being competent means the ability competent host here means the host that is able to accept the foreign dna just say for an example let's say i have a student i cannot teach anyone biology right if you are competent enough if you are even interested even if you are even interested or you can say that if you if you have that capability ki theek hai yaar i can understand biology then only i can teach you then only i can teach you otherwise there is no chance otherwise there is no chance hai na and moreover moreover let's say let's say you are you can matlab i know that yes you can understand biology it's just that you are not studying properly theek hai you are good you are intelligent you are even interested in biology it's just that you don't want to study so what can i do i can torture you isn't it 
isn't it i can torture you how can i torture you i'll wake you up early in the morning right imagine i'm your elder sister okay what am i doing right i am your elder sister and i am your teacher as well i'm waking you up early in the morning imagine near about 4 am i'm telling you hey wake up you have to read the biology then i am just taking you to a room where ice lab is there and i'm telling you you have to sit on that ice lab and you have to read okay then i'm taking you to a room where you know there is no ac and the temperature is near about 40 degrees celsius 42 degrees celsius and now you have to sit and you have to study there then i'm again taking you to the same room and again i'm putting you on that ice lab and i'm telling you sit there and you have to study imagine your life what will you do you will be like theek hai yaar i'll study biology do not torture me and i will study biology same is the thing here right competent host is the host which is having the ability to pick up the to pick up the foreign gene right if my host is capable of picking up the foreign gene then only my foreign gene can enter here then only my foreign gene can enter here so if my host is not capable na i will make it capable i will make it competent i'll tell you why firstly the issue is your dna is hydro what hydrophobic or hydrophilic hydrophilic it is or phobic it is dna is what hydrophilic or hydrophobic tell me tell me tell me what is our dna i don't know that's why i'm asking you is it hydrophilic or phobic is it hydrophilic or phobic philic na water loving na so it means it is lipophobic it means it is lipophobic फिलिक माने लविंग हाइड्रोफिलिक वॉटर लविंग हाइड्रोफोबिक फोबिया फियर वॉटर रिपेलिंग है ना सो इट इज हाइड्रोफिलिक बट इट इज लिपोफोबिक इट इज केयर ऑफ लिपिड इट इज इट इज इन लव विद वॉटर बेसिकली इट मीन्स दैट योर डी एन ए कैन नॉट क्रॉस प्लाज्मा मैमब्रेन डायरेक्टली इट कैन नॉट क्रॉस प्लाज्मा मैमब्रेन डायरेक्टली ठीक है सो इफ आई वॉन्ट माई सेल टू पिक अप द जीन और द डी एन ए आई हैव टू मेक इट कॉम्पिटेंट आई हैव टू मेक द वेज राइट राइट नाउ आई एम टॉकिंग अबाउट द वैक्टरलेस जीन ट्रांसफर आई एम टॉकिंग अबाउट द वैक्टरलेस जीन ट्रांसफर ठीक है वॉट एम आई गोइंग टू टॉक आई एम गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट द वैक्टरलेस जीन ट्रांसफर बट बिफोर दैट कम बैक टू दिस टॉपिक सो आई एम टेलिंग यू इफ माई होस्ट इज नॉट एबल टू पिक अप द फॉरन जीन इफ माई होस्ट इज एबल टू पिक अप द फॉरन जीन देन इट इज द कॉम्पिटेंट होस्ट सो इफ माई होस्ट इज नॉट कॉम्पिटेंट हाउ कैन वी मेक इट कॉम्पिटेंट वी कैन बिकॉज ऑफ सम ट्रीटमेंट्स बिकॉज ऑफ सम ट्रीटमेंट्स देन आई विल कम बैक टू दिस वैक्टरलेस जीन ट्रांसफर द ट्रीटमेंट्स इंक्लूड लेट मी टेल यू फर्स्ट इज ट्रीटमेंट विद डाई वेलेंट कैटायन ट्रीटमेंट विद डाई वेलेंट कैटायन विच डाई वेलेंट कैटायन वी कैन प्रेफर कैल्शियम आयन और मैग्नीशियम कैल्शियम आयन और मैग्नीशियम लेट से इफ आई एम ट्रीटिंग द सेल इफ आई विल स्टार्ट ट्रीटिंग द सेल विल विद कैल्शियम सोल्ट लेट्स टेक द एग्जाम्पल ऑफ कैल्शियम क्लोराइड लेट्स टेक द एग्जाम्पल ऑफ कैल्शियम क्लोराइड आई हैव आई एम ट्रीटिंग द सेल विद कैल्शियम क्लोराइड विद सी ए सी एल टू देन वाई why am i giving the treatment with divalent cations because they can create temp they can create pores in the cell wall right they can create pores in the cell wall right and i told you that my dna is hydrophilic it is lipophobic it cannot cross the plasma membrane directly so i have to make the ways theek hai bachche so the pores will be created in the outer covering in the cell wall and and now right this is the first step of the torture then what will i do what will i do Yes can you tell me the next step can you tell me the next step to torture this particular cell yes can you tell me the next step to torture this particular cell first step is this na treatment with the cation right because pores will be created then bachche i have to incubate i have to incubate i will take this cell i will incubate it with my desired gene i will incubate it with my desired gene right and how am i going to incubate it on ice right on ice i am going to incubate it then i will give it a heat shock after incubating it why am i incubating them together because already in my cell pores are there right so i am incubating this cell and the desired dna fragment because i want to make sure that this dna enters this cell okay then again i will give it a heat shock 
near about at 42 degrees celsius like i will move them uh, to a temperature where uh, to, to uh, i will change the temperature i will make it 42 degrees celsius again i will bring it back on the ice right so these are the ways by which i'm making sure that my host cell it accepts the foreign gene it accepts the foreign dna are you getting it are you getting it that's how i will make my cell competent that's how i will make my cell uh, uh, that's how i will make the cell competent so here you can see see dna is hydrophilic right it cannot pass through cell membrane in order to force bacteria to take up the plasmid we have to make it competent okay so we can treat it with the specific concentration of divalent cation like calcium so along with calcium we can also use magnesium right so because of that the chances of dna entering the cell will increase why because cation will create the pores in the cell wall then but recombinant dna will be forced into such cells by incubating the cells with recombinant dna on ice then placing them at 42 degrees celsius that is heat shock and then putting them back on ice so that's how i can make bacterial cell competent that's how i can make bacterial cell competent understood that's how i can make bacterial cell competent that this point clear varun this point clear varun theek hai so so okay this this part clear this part clear sure okay so these are the way to make the cell competent and as i said there are vectorless transmissions also vectorless uh, transmission uh, vectorless transformations also where without vector we can put our uh, gene directly into the host cell so the most important is micro injection but if you want to understand the micro injection you can relate it with icsi do you remember icsi do you remember icsi that is intracytoplasmic sperm injection that is intracytoplasmic sperm injection do you remember do you remember this intracytoplasmic sperm injection right which it is the reproductive assisted reproductive technology do you remember icsi it is assisted reproductive technology and in the icsi the point is the success rate is more so we are directly taking the nucleus of the sperm and we are directly with the help of a uh, glass needle with the help of a micro pipette we are directly putting it in the cell remember icsi okay icsi so same is the case here the recombinant dna is directly injected into the nucleus of the animal cell micro injection this is one way micro injection then bache another way is this biolistic or gene gun method so this method is mainly preferred for plants right but it can be used for the animals as well here what are we doing we are taking the tungsten or the gold particles why tungsten or the gold particles it is written here na gold or tungsten can you tell me their symbols tungsten is w what about gold what about gold can you tell me their symbols tungsten is w na gold is gold is hanji gold is au excellent and silver is ag ag silver is ag or hg silver is ag or hg ag and mercury is mercury is mercury is hg thank god so gold or tungsten right why are we using them because they are not reactive my dna is not going to react with it so to these particle the dna will be coated dna will be coated no, so now this is biolistic or gene gun like there will be the bombardments with a very high velocity right with a very high velocity with the help of this gene gun these particles they will be released they are having the coating of dna now these cells will directly these particles will directly enter within the cells within the plant cells so if they are entering within the plant cell they are also taking my dna they are also taking my dna so this is also one way right bache this is also one way are you getting it this is also one way theek hai theek hai okay this is a gene gun and then bache disarmed pathogen like i gave you the example of 
agrobacterium tumefacin we can use it i gave you the example of retroviruses so they so this micro injection biolistic gene gun method they are vectorless gene transfer and here you can when you are using disarmed pathogen you are talking about the vectors are wa hsp sir long time no see bengals are kmno4 colored acha guys don't worry do not miss hsp sir because soon he is going to take your marathon session and he has promised to post the videos uh, after every 2 days hai na it's good na so what type of videos you people want to see right you do you want short tricks from hsp sir do you want shorts like 1 minute videos for from hsp sir the strategy videos from hsp sir what do you want people what do you want what type of videos do you want वाह सर जी ट्रिक्स ओके नूर इज सेइंग ट्रिक्स व्हाट अबाउट अदर्स एवरीथिंग मैम ऑर्गेनिक केमिस्ट्री ट्रिक्स ट्रिक्स सो एच एस पी सर योर ट्रिक्स आर वेरी फेमस सो आई थिंक यू शुड पोस्ट सम वीडियोस एंड सी दे आर आस्किंग फॉर द ऑर्गेनिक केमिस्ट्री दे आर आस्किंग फॉर ऑर्गेनिक केमिस्ट्री short tricks basically okay theek hai so he is going to post the videos soon don't worry about it right soon he is going to post the videos for sure are i don't think that he is just the organic king he is very good in physical chemistry and the inorganic chemistry as well are he'll be back soon chill he'll be back soon चलो सो दिस इज अबाउट द वेक्टरलेस एंड द वेक्टर जीन ट्रांसफर ओके सो नाउ वी हैव ट्रांसफॉर्म द जीन यू नो दैट वी हैव टू चेक फॉर द ट्रांसफॉर्मेशन वी हैव टू फिगर आउट द ट्रांसफॉर्मेंट एंड द नॉन ट्रांसफॉर्मेंट एंड फाइनली 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 वॉट डू वी नीड राइट राइट वी नीड द ट्रांसफॉर्मेंट्स एंड द नॉन ट्रांसफॉर्मेंट्स यू नीड नो दैट विद द हेल्प ऑफ सेलेक्टेबल मार्कर्स वी आर गोइंग टू चेक इट सो नाउ कैन यू रिलेट ऑल दट स्टेप्स ऑल टूगेदर can you relate all that steps together that what is going to happen first right isolate dna get the purified form of dna how can you get the purified dna you have to treat that cell with all the enzymes like rnas proteases but you cannot treat that cell with the dnas yes you cannot treat that cell with the dnas why can't you treat that cell with the dnas the reason is dnas will digest dna hai na and we need dna that's why we are not going to treat it with dnas one thing now second point is people second point is that uh, you should know about the vectors right now you know vector uh, uh, gene transfer with the help of vectors and now you also know vectorless gene transfer you know about the gel electrophoresis you know about the pcr and you know with the help of selectable markers we can check transformants from the non transformant now what is the next step next step is the protein right why are we doing all that things because we need that particular protein isn't it we need that particular protein why are we playing with that dna because that dna is going to that gene is going to express itself by making protein right that gene is going to express itself by making protein right so when are we going to call it as a recombinant protein when let's say this is a cell here you have inserted here you have inserted a recombinant plasmid recombinant plasmid means you have inserted a plasmid having foreign gene then you can say that that from this cell you are going to get a recombinant protein theek hai so recombinant protein when it is obtained from recombinant plasmid that's what you need to remember okay that's what you need to remember now the next point right bache now what is the next point the next point is yes what is the next point the next point here is that ultimately we are doing all that things for that protein that protein can be anything maybe it's a it's a peptide which is protecting ourselves from a disease it's a protein which is a, you know a drug or it is increasing immunity it can be anything right that's why we are investing so much that's why we are using these techniques because we want a product from that cell we want a product from that cell let's say if you want it at a small scale right small scale means in a lab right in a lab if you want to make it simply you can make it in flask right in a flask you can grow your uh, host cell then you can get the protein with the help of various extraction techniques you can check it you can get it this is one way right for some experiments you are making but if the production is at a large scale right 
large scale then obviously you have to use in the industries what are you going to use you are going to use the bioreactors what are we going to use bioreactors what are these bioreactors they are the large fermenting vessels with curved bases right they are the large fermenting vessels with the curved bases now in these bioreactors we have to we have to basically in these bioreactors we have to grow our host organism right let's say if it is a bacterial cell here you are going to grow it right you can you grow it in two ways just say let's say you can go for batch culture you can also go for continuous culture but mainly we prefer continuous culture because here the bacteria it grows exponentially our host cell grows exponentially what is a batch culture just say let's say i started the classes for biology i will just take 30 students i will teach them first i will finish their syllabus and then i will take new batch batch culture let's say in my batch there are different entry points every week i am taking new students new admissions then it will be the continuous batch now what's the difference here it's very simple just say let's say if in the bioreactors i have added all the essential nutrient medium i have added my host there i have provided it all the optimum condition my host is growing the host cells they are using this uh, the nutrient medium right and after some time i will check i will right when the material is finished obviously that bacterial cells they will die then i will get their product the protein whatever it is batch culture like in the starting itself i have added the culture medium i have added the host cells there they are feeding on that food they are dividing and after that particular cycle i will get my product then it is the continuous culture where i am adding the nutrient medium continuously i am removing the waste continuously right and because every all the time food is available all the time food is available so cells they are feeding on it all the time food is available cells are feeding on it right they are feeding on it feeding on it feeding on it food is available here and then at the end what is going to happen what is going to happen bachche i will from one side i will take out my product as well this is a continuous culture so now imagine if that cells they are continuously they are getting the food there is no limitations right there is no limitation on that food right obviously that bacterial cell will keep on dividing and it will be having it will be in its log phase in exponential phase right in its exponential phase so that is how right that is how we are going to get the we are uh, large scale production of that recombinant protein we will prefer the bioreactor so that's how we will obtain the gene product clear clear so let's read it from ncert quickly that when you insert a piece of alien dna into cloning vector transfer it into a bacterial plant or animal cell alien dna will get multiplied right right so ultimately the main aim is to get the desirable protein right right so dna has to express then you will get the dna uh, desired pro uh, protein right so foreign gene it gets expressed under appropriate condition only the expression of foreign gene in the host cell involves the understanding of many technical details just here they have given the example that after having cloned the gene of interest and having optimized the conditions to induce the expression of target protein one has to consider producing it on a large scale right right when we need this recombinant protein on a large scale right bachche on a large scale so here one line is written that if any protein encoding gene is expressed in a heterologous host right just say let's say if you whatever gene uh, let's say you have inserted a gene in a different host in not in that particular species not in that particular organism in a different host you will use this word heterologous host it is the recombinant protein that you are going to get it from it right bachche right so for large scale production we are going to go for the bioreactors right if you want to produce that protein in the 100 or 1000 liters okay so here in these bioreactors what is provided right optimal condition the best condition for that particular host right jaise proper ph is there proper temperature is there proper substrates are provided salt vitamin oxygen everything appropriate is provided theek okay? hai so in which so this question can be asked that in which culture is it the batch culture or the continuous culture where the host 
cell is in its exponential phase it is the continuous culture when there is a continuous supply of the food when there is the continuous supply of the food then that particular host cell will show the maximum growth clear bache so here you can see two type of bioreactor this is a simple stirred tank bioreactor this is a sparked stirred tank bioreactor okay okay so here you can see there is a proper uh, you know can you see the stirrer right it will provide the uniform it will make sure that there is uniform availability of oxygen throughout the bioreactor okay it is a simple spur simple stirred tank bioreactor see acid base for ph control steam for sterilization is there right the foam breaker is also present flat bladed impeller the culture broth so see the naming you should know about the naming right the air which is uh, the past here it is also the sterile air right because we do not want our culture to be infectious okay this is the sparse disturbed tank bioreactor here you can see the gas entrainment is there the bubbles are present and these bubbles they dramatic they dramatically increases the oxygen transfer area which is important here it is also a previous year question ठीक है समीक्षा सो यू कैन सी द इंक्रीज सर्फेस एरिया फॉर ऑक्सीजन ट्रांसफर इज अवेलेबल सो प्लीज राइट डू नॉट फॉर्गेट दीज डायग्राम्स दे आर इंपॉर्टेंट राइट सो इन बायो रिएक्टर्स राइट एज आई सेट द कर्वड बेस इज देयर वाई टू फैसिलिटेट द मिक्सिंग ऑफ द रिएक्टर कॉन्टेंट राइट द स्टर विल मेक श्योर दैट देर इज इवन मिक्सिंग एंड ऑक्सीजन अवेलेबिलिटी थ्रू आउट द बायो रिएक्टर्स एंड बच्चे द एयर कैन बी बबल्ड through the reactor if you look at the figure closely you will see that bio reactor has an agitator system an oxygen delivery system a foam control system a temperature control system ph control system and sampling ports are there from where we can periodically take out our culture theek hai bachche so this is about the bio reactor and the last thing here is the downstream processing because now our host has expressed its gene we have the recombinant protein we have to extract that recombinant protein and then the separation and purification will be done right so for separation it depends what type of protein is there this is sometimes some cells right by exocytosis some cells by exocytosis they form their protein sometimes we have to destroy the cell to get the protein so it depends upon that so various techniques are applied there for the separation and purification like sometimes chromatography is also used there are various techniques when you want a particular product right so in downstream processing what are we what are we going to see that after completion of the biosynthetic stage the product has to be subjected through a series of processes before it is ready for marketing as a finished product ठीक है सो वी हैव टू सेपरेट इट फ्रॉम दैट कल्चर वी हैव टू गेट इट इन अ प्योरीफाइड फॉर्म राइट सो दी ऑल द थिंग्स विल कम अंडर द डाउनस्ट्रीम प्रोसेसिंग सो दिस इज व्हाट वी इंक्लूड इन डाउन स्ट्रीम प्रोसेसिंग ठीक है बच्चे राइट सो बिफोर सेलिंग इट in the market we have to add the suitable preservatives we have to do the quality check the proper quality analysis is important and moreover students if it is a drug it has to go for the clinical clinical trials as well okay so this is all about the biotechnology principles and processes right so pdf will be shared in the telegram group the chapter is over and yes this class is more than sufficient for this particular chapter now the agitator system means right which will the proper air will be provided now and then there will be the proper uh, mixing of that air so that uniform availability of oxygen is there throughout the reactor sushma bachche theek hai so this is all about this chapter so now i am hoping the comments right in which you have to answer the homework questions and moreover you like the class or not so bachche please be sincere i told you about the scholarship test in the starting right there is a link in the description okay there is a link in the description where you will get that wait i'll show you so see this that's our class so here you can see the link an academy scholarship test so click on that link bachche right you just need to pay 99 rupees for the registration and you will see the neat level competition and even if you will get good marks there you will get the scholarship you will get very good prizes as well theek okay? hai so please do not miss it it's my request i think you should go for it okay and moreover here in the description box there is a link for our batch okay there is a link for our batch i think now it is not available it is available but it is in other uh, video of mine you can check any video see this 
Uh oh, uh oh. See this, this is the video section. So you can check the videos in the description box. You will get the link and you can be the part of that batch. Okay. So if you're new to our channel, do subscribe our channel. Keep studying. Now we will have another class and uh, that is, see, Pankhuri Ma'am's class is there on photosynthesis. Your HSP Sir's class is there on 19th of Jan on isomerism. Your uh, Kalas Sir class is there. It is on relative motion. So you have all the details and, 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 and. Our next class is on, I think it is on 18th, you know? It is on 18th, that is biotechnology application. So go for it. Okay, so make sure that you hit the like button. Make sure that you hit the like button. So stay tuned guys, thank you so much. Right, we'll share the PDF in the official Telegram group. Take care.